Wait, did I change the... Okay, good. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I, I remember to change the thumbnail. I think I did. That means I think we're good. Let me also just tweet this out real quick. I swear, I'm like sitting here for like 10 minutes before the stream just making sure everything's all, all good and, and half the time I usually make some mistakes somewhere, so. But I think we're good this time. I don't think it's like possible not to make a mistake. It just always happens. All right, I always have to change the chat settings because for some reason, maybe there's a setting I can do to change this. For some reason, YouTube's default setting. Wait, did I just insert an ad? I did not mean to do that. I'm so sorry if you guys have to watch an ad. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to click that. Uh, hope, hopefully not everyone has to watch an ad. I don't know. I accidentally clicked a button I've never seen here before called insert ad. It's just a money button. So I th thought to click on it, but uh, whatever. It it um it didn't seem to... I don't know if you guys got an ad, actually. I have no idea. I didn't know that was a thing. I knew that was a thing on Twitch. I'm doing good, Lolo. How about you? We're just going to wait for some people to get in here. <laughs> I got a lot of movies on here. Like, honestly... I wanted more, but this is enough. This is like... Let me just preface what I'm even doing today, because I don't know if everybody realizes that I'm literally just tier ranking every single comic book superhero movie that I've ever seen. And these are all of them right here. Now, when I say comic book superhero, I mean comic book and superhero. So like not one or the other, because there's movies that are comic book movies, but they're not superhero movies. And there's movies that are superhero movies and they're not comic book movies. And I just I wanted to include like literally everything so or not literally everything i wanted to include just comic book superhero movies because otherwise i would be missing a lot of things and the list would be really big and it would just be it would be rough it, it would be pretty rough i should really do like a uh what do you call it like a countdown to these streams i don't usually do that but i feel like i should Oh yeah, we I literally just started, so <laughs> I'm just waiting for some people to get in here. Cuz what I could do is one of those things where it's like a scheduled thing so people know exactly when it's going to be cuz I never do that because I'm pretty bad with scheduling, so I, I don't want to do that because then I know if I do that and then I don't end up making it on time. You know what I mean? So I just I just try not to schedule these things with exact times because otherwise I'll probably miss it. There's a lot of shitty movies on here, too. Most of them are great, though. Like, I know for a fact it's going to be majority is S. Not majority, but a lot of them are going to be S. A lot of them A. Decent amount in B. There's not going to be many in D and F. Like, just looking at it here, there's there's not going to be that many that are D and F. But C, maybe? I don't know. Because these movies, to me, they're just... Most of them are very entertaining. Like, I don't think many of them here are not entertaining. But even just looking at it from a story perspective and the characters and and how they're actually made, most of them are pretty well made. Most of them. There's a lot of ones from, like, the 80s and the 90s that I have that are just god-awful. <laughs> we'll talk about that, but that'll be fun. Favorite Batman? Well, we're going to go in order, so we're actually going to be starting with the Batman movies. So you'll you'll find out in a couple seconds, I guess. Well, not in a couple seconds. I'm going to... This is going to be a long stream, probably. I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to go as fast as I can just because there's 94 movies here. And that's... I mean, even if we only took a minute on each, that would still be 90 minutes. And that's... That's not going to happen. We all know it's going to be like five minutes per movie or something. But it depends. Some movies I'm going to talk about longer. It just depends. You know, you guys can talk about them too. Let let me know what you think about them and stuff. But we're going to go in order here. It's DC first. And I kind of went by franchise sort of. So like you got the Batman stuff, Superman, DCEU, 
a couple of just solo things. And then we have only two independent uh, movies, which is stuff that's not Marvel or DC, which is Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2. I know there's others. I just haven't seen any others. I know, I think Dread. I'm pretty sure Dread is neither Marvel or DC, and I've just never seen that. And then we get into Marvel, and this is like just a bunch of random Marvel things. You got like Blade and Punisher and Daredevil, Hulk, Fantastic Four, Ghost Rider stuff. Then you have the whole X-Men franchise. You have all the Spider-Man movies. And then we're going to end it with the MCU, and we'll be done with Spider-Man. No Way Home is the last one. So, I mean, that's a decent amount there. That's a decent amount. The only movie here that I actually can't talk about, I have it on here just because I was planning to watch it by now, but I didn't, is Eternals. I actually haven't seen Eternals yet. I was planning to, but I just never got around to it. So I'm just going to leave that one off. I don't know. It's whatever. I was going to see it in theaters, but I I just never got around to it. And I know it's going on Disney Plus in like a month. So I was like, I'll just wait for it to come out on Disney Plus And I'll probably just do a reaction to it. So even though I know people have shit on this movie like crazy, I know there's also an audience that liked it though. So Merry Christmas to you too, Shane White. Damn, it's... Oh, you do that, like, military time stuff? <laughs> it's 12.15 a.m. here in London, but I'm going to stay up and watch this. Well, I appreciate it. You know, that used to be really late to me, but for some reason I've been, like, going to sleep really late as of recently, so... All right, let's just start it. Let's just let's just start it. Um, I wanted to start with Batman just because... You know, we're starting off with probably my favorite stuff from the DC universe... Most mostly, Batman nineteen eighty nine with Michael Keaton. This one I saw for the first time like last year actually because I did it for the channel. I've always been a huge fan of Batman since I was like a kid, but I just never watched these movies specifically. I only saw Batman and Robin and the Dark Knight trilogy, and that was it. And you know, I saw some of the like cartoons and stuff, but that was it. So when I watched this, all I knew was you know Jack Nicholson's in it. Michael Keaton's in it, and I'm like, all right, we'll see how it is. And it's really campy. It's really fun. It's it's not like a incredibly made movie in terms of like, I guess depth, but it's Tim Burton style, and I think it works very well. The music's incredible. Danny Elfman's music is incredible. Jack Nicholson is fantastic as Joker in this. He's not my favorite Joker, not even close, but he's still fantastic regardless. I think it's I think it's a great movie. It, just from the fact that it's a lot of fun. Like that that's the only thing that I think is important here is it the, the style that Tim Burton has, it's a fun movie. It's no way realistic at all. There's no realism to it. It's very goofy and campy, but it it works in what it's trying to do and I think Michael Keaton was great. I don't think Michael Keaton's a good Bruce Wayne to be honest. I thought he was a good Batman. I didn't love him as Bruce Wayne though. And nothing against Michael Keaton. I just didn't think he fit that role, but I think he fit everything with Batman very well. So I, I liked it. And it didn't really do origins for him, except for a couple flashbacks and stuff. But for the most part, it was not really doing an origin. I'm great, Marcus. How about you, man? How about you? But yeah, I, I it's a great movie. There's not much else to say about it. I don't really have any issue with this movie. On like a large scale, I guess. But it's not S. It's it's not going to be S. I mean, those are reserved for like movies that I think are literally near perfect, and I would like die for the movie. Essentially, no, I'm I'm not kidding. But you know what I mean. <laughs> there's going to be like twenty movies in S. By the way, I'm already predicting there's probably going to be about twenty movies in there. Maybe a little bit less than that. I don't know. But there's going to be a decent amount for sure. Batman Returns. So this one was a lot darker. Okay, Batman Returns was a lot darker, but it was still goofy and campy. It wasn't like realistic. It wasn't gritty. It was just darker it had some darker things going on with it which i liked i heard i you know looked into some of the stuff of what was going on when the movie was out and apparently especially parents didn't like that like they were freaking out they were like oh no my kids can't see this but i i don't care that doesn't affect my my viewing experience so i, I like that danny devito was good as penguin catwoman was great in this one i would say probably the best catwoman we've had so far i mean we've only had three right we've had her and hathaway in dark knight rises and she she was fine in that and then we had the catwoman movie which we'll, we'll talk about later 
Uh, but I think this is probably one of the better Catwomans, to be honest. So I, I would say this is a pretty solid movie. I don't think it's as good as the, the Batman 1989, though. I'm going to put it in good. I, I think it, it, it deserves one tier less, just because I don't think, although I like Penguin, I don't think he's as interesting as Jack Nicholson as Joker. And I do think some of the action sequences and stuff, they weren't as fun as the first one. They weren't as interesting, I guess. But Catwoman is what made it for me. Catwoman's the part of it that I thought was really good. And that was the highlight of the movie for me. And also Christopher Walken was that one guy. I forget the dude's name. And he was okay, I guess. He wasn't like the best part of the movie. But I, I liked how it was darker. I do like that. I like how it was a little bit more mature in that way. The Catwoman movie is soft porn. <laughs> you know, pretty much. Pretty much. I'd put it at the top. Yeah, no, the top's reserved for some certain things. Just just some certain things. Um, I'm going to have some unpopular opinions. I know that. There's definitely some movies on here that I'm going to be very different with. That's all I'm saying. All right. Well, Batman Returns, like I said, it's a good, it's a good movie. Batman Forever. Now, this one's interesting. This one's interesting because it, it it went in a completely different direction. Obviously, a new new Batman. Now it's the same universe though. Like I don't, I still don't understand what they were trying to do there. I'm pretty sure it's still the same universe. They just recasted Bruce Wayne because Alfred's the same dude. But there's no there's no like, it doesn't really connect in any way. I don't think it really matters. I, I don't think really anyone cared. But I don't think Val Kilmer. He's not bad. He, he's not bad as Batman. He's just not the best. Nowhere near. Uh, but I thought he was okay. And Robin was in here as well. I thought he was probably the most interesting in, in, uh, part of the movie. Jim Carrey as Riddler, I honestly kind of like. Like, he's so over the top and so insane. But that's kind of the point. Like, it, I'm okay with that. I thought Two-Face kind of sucked, though. And nothing against the actor. I, I Nothing against him. But I don't know why they had to make him also over the top i think it would have been so much cooler if he was this really serious like down-to-earth villain and then have that contrasted with the ridiculous over-the-top riddler i think that would have been way more interesting but instead they just decided to make two-face also very over the top and i don't i get why maybe because they wanted to fit the tone of the movie but i think it would have been so much cooler and more interesting if he was very different the love interest that they added there, I forget the girl's name. She was not that she was not that interesting. I didn't really care for that. Um, the set pieces were way more again goofy, but like some of it was distractingly goofy because it almost felt like you were watching people fighting on a toy set as opposed to fighting on like a real set. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's average. I'm not gonna say it's bad or meh or even. It's still a fine movie that I could enjoy. But it's not like, it's not going to get much higher than that for me. Definitely not. I'm so excited for the Batman. Oh, me too. It's by far my number one most anticipated of uh, next year for sure. For sure. Poison Ivy in the movie. Oh, well, that's the next one. Batman and Robin. I, you know, honestly, I'll give you that. For this movie, I think the best thing about it was Poison Ivy. I do. Uma Thurman, that's how you say her name, right? She was great. She was, I actually, if they were to ever, I mean, I don't know, how old is she now? She's probably young enough to still play it. If they were to ever do Poison Ivy again, I really would not mind seeing her play it. I really wouldn't. I don't know how old she is now, though. I don't know if it would still work. I honestly haven't seen her in a movie in a while, so I have no idea. She's probably still young, I'm sure. Young enough to do it. I don't, I mean, does, Cat, does Poison Ivy even have to be that young? I don't know. But she was the best part of this movie, I would say. Because even though everything else was very goofy, and she was goofy too, she had a layer of, I don't know, interesting scenes and lines that I kind of enjoyed to a degree. Batman Forever and Batman Robin are considered extremely bad. I know. I know they're considered extremely bad by most people. I think some people cut Batman Forever some slack, though. I would say. At least from what I've seen. 
But yeah, no, Batman and Robin gets completely shit on. I don't know if I want to give it D or F though. Like it's going to be D or F for sure. There's, it's not getting even C. I have nostalgia for it. Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I used to think it was a masterpiece when I watched it as a kid. I mean, it's so bad, but I think part of that makes it watchable because of how bad it is. Which is the only redeeming factor, I think, of this. And also, Poison Ivy I thought was fun. I don't. I didn't hate Batgirl either. I really didn't. She wasn't terrible. Uh, fuck. I don't know. Does it deserve bad though? I feel like it's it's not boring at least. And if you're gonna give me a movie and it's gonna be bad, at least make it entertaining. I think this provided that, so I'm putting it in meh. I'm putting it in meh, because like yes, it's bad, but like at least it's entertaining, so it's not really bad to me anymore you know what i mean the bad movies are going to be the ones that not only are bad but are also just boring as shit and then that that makes it even worse because you could have a boring movie that's pretty good and you could have a pretty bad movie that's entertaining like it that happens you know it depends on your feeling too if i'm in the mood for a solid story i'm not going to watch this but if i'm literally just in the mood to put on something in the background and just laugh at I mean, this movie can kind of provide that to a degree. So I, it would probably be like the bottom of D, though. Like when we get more movies here, it's probably going to be towards the bottom. It might move to F. I don't know. I just, for right now, I don't think it's the worst thing ever. Batman Begins. This is when we get to the good stuff because the Dark Knight trilogy is, to me, probably the best trilogy here. Probably the best like little franchise, probably. I don't know. It, it's some of the best consistent stuff out here for sure i i don't think a single one of these movies missed a beat i mean i'm a big christopher no christopher nolan fanboy now after seeing interstellar and i need to see more of his movies because the ones i have seen i have absolutely loved pretty much every single one of them there's not a single christopher nolan movie that i've seen that i haven't liked not, not even just liked. like there's not a single christopher nolan movie i've seen that i haven't loved so I think that means he's probably my favorite director. Batman Begins, I think, is one of the best origin stories to a Batman character ever. Or not, not to a superhero character ever. Like, any origin story on this list, I think it's one of the best. I think the world building this movie does is fantastic. I think the the villains they have, Ra's al Ghul, um, Scarecrow, Killing Murphy, is fucking great in that role. And I like how he, he stuck around for the rest of the franchise, too. He wasn't just in this movie, even though he didn't really do much in the other ones. But he was still there, and it was still fun to watch him. Um, Christian Bale. I, I want to say he's my favorite Bruce Wayne. But I think Ben Affleck is my favorite Batman. So I, I think, I think Chris, Christian Bale nails... I think he's great as Batman too. It's just I just don't. I I kind of like Ben Affleck a little bit more, even though we didn't see as much of Ben Affleck. But from what we have seen, I like him a little bit more. Maybe not from a writing standpoint, but I'm talking about like just the how he looks and how he's built and stuff. That's what I mean by that. I think writing standpoint, I think this Batman is probably the best one too. Because, I mean, that's the only thing that bothered me about Christian Bale's Batman is that he didn't look, like, buff enough for it, you know? he, he In his suit, he was pretty skinny, which works. But, like, I kind of like the Ben Affleck, like, just absolutely shredded, you know what I mean? And he looks, like, terrifying. I mean, this one doesn't, like, terrify me. Like, you know what I mean? He doesn't he doesn't ring me as a terrifying Batman. Well, neither, neither does Robert Patterson, but the actor can present it in a way that is terrifying. And I think this movie did a good job of presenting in that way, but just looking at him, you know, without his performance, I wouldn't be that terrified. But I think that's what's so great about these actors is that they're able to make them terrifying without even looking terrifying from a body standpoint, I guess. And a lot of his gadgets and stuff, some of the coolest things that they use in these movies. I mean, you have freaking Morgan Freeman in this movie too. I always forget that Morgan Freeman's in this. He's one of the best parts of it, too, but I always forget he is for some reason. You're making me want to watch the Batman series. Well, it's 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 worth it. These movies are great, man. Um, besides besides this one, obviously. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, the movie's just great at world building too. It definitely sets up a nice trilogy and it leads into what I would say is the best Batman movie. The Dark Knight, obviously. I mean, this, this is a no-brainer to me. I, I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I think most people agree with me on that. It's just... Uh, it, it's... it's. I would say the closest to perfection you're going to get in a movie. It's not my favorite on this list, though. Trust me, there's a couple others here that I like even more than The Dark Knight. So th this isn't the highest. This is not going to be the highest. But for now, yes, The Dark Knight is my favorite like Batman movie. I mean, I would say the obvious standout part is Heath Ledger as Joker. No, no shit. <laughs> no shit. I would say that's one of the best performances as a super villain in any comic book movie ever. Probably actually, no, just character in general, not even just super villain, just character in general. I would say that's one of the best performances. The story is just as riveting as the first one, but even better. It gets even darker. It gets even crazier. Like, there's way higher. I mean, the stakes were really high in Batman Begins, but the stakes are even higher sometimes in, in, in this one. And it, it, although it's PG-13, and I always say that movies will always get better with an R rating, like, they're only going to improve with an R rating. This is the one time where I don't think it needed an R rating, and I think it's actually perfectly fine as PG-13. I would have, I would always prefer R ratings just because I, like, the extra layer of brutality and realism that you can bring, but they do such a great job of making it still feel really gritty and brutal without having to show it all so it can stay PG-13. It's the closest to R it's going to get without actually being R. And so I think it did a great job with that. I mean, the stakes were, were dark. You had, like, the situation on the boat, which was probably one of my favorite scenes of the movie where he gave the two different uh, boats the, the choice to blow up the other boat. The one was full of prisoners, the one was full of just, you know, regular people, and... I like that moral dilemma that Joker kind of imposes on people in this one, and that's probably why I like him so much as a villain, because he does weird shit like that, where he puts people in these moral dilemmas. I mean, you had the same thing with, um, you know, Batman having to decide whether to get Rachel or... Well, which in the end, he ended up... He was going for um, Harvey, but got Rachel. And led to another great performance of, of Two-Face in this movie. I think Two-Face was actually fantastic. Now, I don't think Two-Face gets enough credit in this one but because he's obviously outshined by Joker, but he's still a great part of the movie. And yeah, it's a fantastic movie. There's not much else to say there. It's a, it's, it's pretty much a masterpiece to me. It's I don't really have any issues. The only Maybe the only thing I can criticize is maybe some of the fight scenes could be a little bit better choreographed, but for the most part, they're perfectly fine. I don't really think they're bad. I just think they could be better. You know, especially compared to, like, you look at, like, the Batman um, v Superman, like, warehouse scene. Like, that one's probably the, the peak uh, choreography of fight scenes. But then again, I don't think these movies are meant to be, you know, all about the action. It's It's way more about the story, at least for the Dark Knight trilogy. Do you have the Incredible Hulk on this list? Yeah, I have pretty much every popular... Any popular one is going to be on this list. Any popular... There's only maybe a few that I left off. that I And the ones I left off for the ones I haven't seen. But like all the main franchises, they're all here. Every MCU, every X-Men, every Spider-Man, every Batman. Well, other than like Batman from like the 1960s, the Adam West one. I didn't, I didn't watch that, so I just didn't include it. I didn't include stuff I haven't seen, essentially. What's up, Trujula? I can't say your name. I'm so sorry. But how are you, LaRock? I'll say your, the last part of your name. Heath Ledger. Yeah, he's a fantastic Joker. Everyone's fantastic in the Dark Knight. It, it's I can go on for this movie for hours, but it's it's one of my favorite movies ever. So it's it makes sense. Now this is where I think I'm gonna have an unpopular opinion because I think a lot of people give The Dark Knight Rises a bad rating like i've seen a lot of people give the dark knight rises like a like a like a they say they say some people have said it's bad some people have straight up said dark knight rises is bad uh, a lot of people mostly just say it's just not as good as the other two it's like not on the same level but i'm gonna be honest i think it's better than batman begins i don't think it's better than the dark knight but i think it's better than batman begins just by a little though not by a lot not by like a large margin it's just slim slim uh some difference but 
I mean, I'll, I'll, as much as I love Batman Begins, I think The Dark Knight Rises does it for me just a little bit more, especially with Tom Hardy as Bane, which Tom Hardy does such a good job at Bane to the point where I didn't even know that was Tom Hardy for like my entire life. Like I, I knew Tom Hardy from Inception and obviously I watched Dark Knight Rises in 2012 when it came out and it took me until Venom came out in 2018 for me to realize once Tom Hardy started to like, you know, be someone who I recognized more frequently it took me until then to be like oh shit wait he he played bane in the dark knight rises <laughs> i just never knew it i mean i was also pretty young so i didn't really pay attention to movie stuff all that much but i watched the movie and i could never tell it was the same guy as the dude from inception so yeah i just didn't know but um he does a fantastic job as bane in this and i love how much it's focused on i mean also batman begins is focused a lot on bruce wayne but this one's focused a lot on bruce wayne too especially with him in, in the in the hole and him trying to rise out and become Batman again because he's had, you know he's been known as this Dark Knight for so long and he's got to like gain the trust back of Gotham and I, I just love how it all plays out especially with the sacrifice in the end the the whole taking the bomb away from the city which he ends up escaping because he's able to put the, the ship on autopilot which I thought was awesome you know It was a sad ending too. Like it makes you tear up because it's like, holy shit, he's dead. And then you see Michael Caine's Alfred, which Michael Caine is incredible as Alfred. I mean, he's an incredible actor in general, so it makes sense. And he kills it in that one scene where he's like crying. He's like, I failed you and stuff. And that, I mean, this scene can't not make you tear up. It's impossible. Um, but then he's, you know, revealed to still be alive, which was a twist. Anne Hathaway as Catwoman is good. I liked her. I thought she was fine. The movie's long. It's definitely one of the longer movies on this list, but I never cared. I like long movies. I'm not a person who's against long movies. I like the more the better to me, as long as the scenes that are added are important. And I don't think there's a single thing in this movie that's not important. So I'm fine with it. Um, I love the one dude. I forgot. Joseph. What's the dude's name? Joseph something. I haven't even mentioned Commissioner Gordon once in this entire goddamn um, stream yet, but he's one of the best parts of all these movies, to be honest. He didn't escape, did he? I thought... I, I, well, okay, okay, so the ending, they have him show up where Alfred sees him. Now, people see that as Alfred just imagining him there. I always assumed he actually did escape because they also showed a scene where Fox, Morgan Freeman's character, found or was told that the self like autopilot thing was added to his, his bat, uh, the bat plane or whatever. So I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure he escaped. I like college humor Batman better than Nolan trilogy. I don't even know what college humor Batman is, but all right. I don't, I would have, I would have assumed he imagined uh, Bruce Wayne being there but the reason why I don't think that is because they had a whole scene showing that Bruce Wayne added an autopilot addition to the, the bat plane like why would they bother showing that if he didn't use it you know what I mean so I'm, I'm, I'm maybe they left it up to interpretation I have no idea regardless it's even if, he, even if he did die, I would still say it's a solid ending. Like regardless of which way it goes, I still think it's a perfect ending. So I don't think they need to ever touch this trilogy again. It's pretty much perfect as is. I love it. And then you got Joker, which isn't really a Batman movie, but it's a Batman universe movie. It's not connected to any of them. It's definitely the most realistic of probably any comic book movie ever. I would say it's the most... I mean, these movies are gritty to an extent, but this is, like, gritty to, like, a, a thousand percent. Like, there's no superpowers. There's none of that. No crazy gadgets. It's literally just full-on a character study on Arthur Fleck as Joker. And I think... I think this is a perfect movie. I mean, you guys probably know this already. I've talked about this movie a couple times on other streams and stuff, but it, it is my favorite movie of all time. It's... It, I'm just, I, I'm putting it to the top. I think you, I think a lot of you already knew that. It's so different than the rest of the movies here. I know it's 
people complain because it's like, oh, it, it rips off other movies, but I every movie rips off other movies. <laughs> I don't give a shit. It does what it's doing very well. It does it very effectively, and that's all that matters to me. I don't care if it's taking inspiration from other films. I would love to go watch those other films. I've had Taxi Driver on my watch list for a while. I would love to go watch it, but that doesn't make a movie bad just because it takes inspiration from other movies. I've never understood that complaint to me. I just didn't make any sense to me. So, whatever. I love this movie. I think it's the perfect psychological just character study on Joker. And it does it in such a realistic and emotional and cinematic way. I just love it, man. I fucking love it. It's not like any other one here, too. If you're watching superhero movies just for the action... Yeah, you're not going to like this movie. It's not action-packed. There's no action, really. It's you know, a couple kills, a couple scenes where he kills people, but that's about it. But, like, it's all about the dialogue and just seeing him crumble from being this man who's clearly got a ton of mental issues to a killer. And I think it's, think it's fucking amazing. I think it's near perfect. I would personally... I, f I think everything could improve itself, but I honestly couldn't really come up with any improvements for this movie. I think it's perfect. I'm sure there's some things I could think of if I really looked at it, but I love it. I love it. Joker's so dark and completely different. Agreed. Exactly. They, they don't rip it off. They just, they're just they inspired by those movies because that's, that's, that's part of art. You get inspiration from other things. I, I don't see the problem with that. I've never seen the problem with that. But some people make it a problem for some reason. It never makes sense to me. Okay, so that's all the Batman movies other than Batman v Superman, which we're saving that for the Superman movies because I feel like that's more of a Superman movie anyways. And it's part of the DCEU, so it's in there. Uh, but for Batman, this is this is what we're looking at here. I, I clearly like a lot of these, but clearly the, the more recent, grittier ones as compared to the, the four, I guess more campy uh, cartoony ones i still enjoy a lot of these it's just i just prefer these ones just more so i don't know that's just that's just me that's just me all right let's move on to superman i don't want to be here on batman forever so um superman i am gonna have similar opinions actually which i think i might get some hate for that but i'm just gonna say it i don't love some of these older ones i think some of them are great though but a lot of them I don't. We also have Supergirl here, which oh, we'll talk about that. But Superman the movie, the one from 1978, this is the oldest movie on this list. I am going to give it... I honestly, like, I don't... Wouldn't find myself rewatching this. Like, this is not a movie I think I'd ever rewatch more than, like, once or twice. But I still think for what it is, for when it was made, for what it did, it's still a fine movie. But I, I don't know if I consider it to be that good, though. You know? It's a very subjective thing. I'm sure if you were alive in this time, it would be very different to you. It would be, you know, you'd hold it close to your heart and stuff because it's nostalgia for you. But, I mean, I watched it for the first time last year. Or, I guess, earlier this year. I... Joker is to dudes nowadays what The Wolf of Wall Street was to dudes in 2013. I still have yet to see The Wolf of Wall Street, but I, I will. I will. I will someday. What do you guys think about Superman? I, I don't... I'm having trouble putting the first one. It's either going to be B or C. And I know that might be sacrilege to some people to put in C, but... I'm doing it. Look, I, there's so many things about this movie I think are great, but at, at the end of the day... I don't think I found myself that entertained by most of this movie. I think the best things about the movie were some of the acting performances. I think Christopher Reeve is great as Superman. I think uh, Gene Hackman is great as Lex Luthor. I think... What was her name? Shit. Lois Lane. I forget the actress's name. I don't know. But she was great. I think she's a great Lois Lane. I would say she's better than Amy Adams. But I think Superman 2 was better. And I would go as far as to put it even higher than Batman Returns. I really liked Superman 2. Like a lot more than Superman. Not a lot more, but I liked it more. 
than Superman, uh, the first one. Mainly because, I mean, if it was very similar to a Spider-Man 2 in a lot of ways. It was like really dealing with him trying to deal with or trying to deal with the Clark Kent life and balance that with the Superman life. And then, you know, Lois finds out and I really love how they handled it and how they ended it with him like completely wiping her uh, memory of him. Just kind of like what they did in Spider-Man No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home spoilers, by the way. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later, but I'm not going to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home right now. Oh, yeah, Margot Kidder. Yeah, okay. That's her. She was also in Black Christmas. You should watch Goodfellas. I do plan on that. And The Godfather. A lot of those I plan on watching. I just haven't gotten around to it. I, I, I watch whatever the polls tell me to watch. Yo, when did 63 people get in here? We had like 20 people in here like a minute ago and then 63 people popped in. What are you guys doing? How, how are you guys doing? I, 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 I usually don't check the viewers because that's like a thing people say. They're like, don't check the viewers on your stream because you'll change your attitude as it goes along. But I find it to be useful because I, I try to be on my, like my best, like, you know, personality as much as I can throughout the entire stream. But like... It is nice to see because it's like sometimes when you see the viewers go up, you're like, okay, something's working. You know what I mean? If, if the viewers are going up, you at least know something's working. So you know you're keeping people entertained. And if it's going down, then you know you're not keeping people entertained. So I, I do like looking at viewers as the stream goes along. I know a lot of people say you shouldn't. I mean, the worst are considered Fantastic Four, Catwoman. We'll get to those. We'll get to those. So what are we talking about? Superman 2? Okay, so Superman 2 is like... I think it's a lot better than the first one. I, I just do. I don't know. I, I think a lot of people agree with me on that, though. There's actually two versions of this movie, I believe, and I don't know which version I watched. I watched whatever version I reacted to on this channel. So whatever one that was, I really enjoyed it. That's all I'm saying. I Oh, Lex Luthor was 20 times better in this one than he was in the first one. Yo, Hades Fades. What the hell, bro? <laughs> uh, what's up, Editing Geek? Thank you, A Plus Tech. Tech education, how you doing? Who's your favorite superhero? Gotta be Spider Man. Yours is the Hulk. That's a that's a different one. I usually don't hear that, but mine's definitely Spider Man. Spider Man, Batman, and Logan, or the Wolverine, whatever you want to call them. Those are my top three right there. <clears throat> Who's your favorite actor playing a superhero? Probably, you know, honestly, Hugh Jackman might be might be mine. Yeah, I might actually I agree with you because like I love Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland for Spider Man. I love Christian Bale. Ben Affleck for Batman, but like the one where it's like that person's perfect in that role. He's played it for so long is, is Hugh Jackman. So I actually would agree with you, to be honest. Superman kind of needs a revival, a perfect Superman. Oh, well, we got one right here. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, Superman 2, good movie. Superman 3, I don't know what the hell happened in this movie. I'm sorry. Superman 3 was one of the dumbest things I've watched, but it wasn't the worst. There was, there was some stuff I liked about it, okay? There was some stuff that was charming about it. They, they added a whole new love interest. What made no sense to me is why did they just get rid of Lois Lane? I'm assuming Margot Kidder just couldn't come back or something because they just got rid of her, and they get rid of Lex Luthor. It's like, what the hell? So that was stupid. They added this new dude who was like this technician guy who like... He was good with computers, and then he got manipulated by these super villains who were trying to get him to like build a super evil computer. It was probably the most boring villain storyline they could have done, but at least the movie had some decent like production value, I guess. But then Superman Four is just garbage. The so Superman Four is one of the worst things I've ever watched. I I mean, that's no surprise. I think everyone kind of agrees that, that, that what the hell was going on there. It was pretty bad. Who was your favorite Spider-Man villain? Um, I would say it would have been Doc Ock before No Way Home, but I think after No Way Home, Green Goblin might be my favorite. Like that version of Green Goblin. I think Doc Ock's still up there. I just don't know. It's between Doc Ock and Green Goblin, I would say. Oh uh, yeah, I just uh, Superman Four is just terrible. They added this nuclear man to it. Lex Luthor was in it at least, so that was fine. Lois Lane was in it too, so that was okay. But they didn't do anything fun in it. They didn't do anything interesting. It was a waste of a movie, to be honest. I like Iron Man more than Superman, just by a little. 
Oh yeah, Robert Downey Jr. is incredible too. He's one of the best actors playing a superhero for sure. Supergirl. Now Supergirl, the only thing I liked about this movie, the only thing I liked about it is that Supergirl is quite hot. <laughs> that's the that's the only th that's the only thing it's got going for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a pretty bad movie. I like I think it's better than Superman 4, but it's a pretty damn bad movie. I didn't even know this existed until like a couple months ago because I I wanted to do this stream. Like I always I've been planning this live stream for like months. Like months. So I've been you know, trying to watch as many comic book movies I haven't watched yet to try to prepare for it. And I just came across this. I'm like, I'll watch it. And what the shit, man? What the shit was this? It was so stupid, but she's hot, though. So I was like, all right, it's at least entertaining because I can be like, you know, what? she's attractive. I mean, she is. I mean, come on. I, I just, I just got to. For those who haven't seen the movie, I just got, I mean, come on. She, she looks pretty good in the movie. I mean, come on. I, I mean, it, it was a fun movie. Every scene where she was in college. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me see college scenes. Because she, she had like a, a different look when she was in college. Yeah, she was just like, she just had a different like look in college. And for some reason, those scenes were kind of fun because it was like a fish out of water story where it's like she was, she didn't belong there, obviously, because she's, you know, from Krypton or whatever. So she came down to earth and she was like in college which makes no sense it makes absolutely no sense why the hell is she in college oh yeah kick ass is on the list kick ass and kick ass 2 are right there and oh incredibles or not these are just comic book superhero movies so if it's not based on a comic universe or it's not superheroes then it's not on the list like it has to be both so incredibles although it's a superhero movie it's not a comic book movie so i didn't include it because I didn't want to include like a million movies. There's already like 94 movies on here. So I, I just wanted to make it not as much. You know what I mean? Thank you, the smug smuggler. I appreciate it. Which MCU movie do you feel has the weakest finale? Maybe okay, well, compared to the rest of the movie, I like Doctor Strange, but I feel like Doctor Strange's finale wasn't that good. Although I love the first two acts of Doctor Strange. Maybe Thor The Dark World. I don't know. A lot of those movies have pretty bad endings. <clears throat> so yeah, Supergirl. Um, the college stuff was the only fun stuff, even though it was pointless because why was she in college? Like, she was going down to Earth to, like, solve an, a problem. Like, she wasn't there to go to college. It made no sense. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. It, it doesn't really. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. But those are the only fun scenes, though, so... Superman Returns was much better than the past couple Superman properties. It was definitely an improvement. I don't think it was, like, great or anything. I think I like Superman 2 just a tad bit more. I want to put it bottom of good. It's a, pr it's a pretty good movie. Um, Lois Lane in this was okay. I think Superman was actually really, like, this was a really good follow-up to Christopher Reeves. Like, he actually, the guy looks like Christopher Reeves. So, like, that was already a solid casting because it felt very in line with the Christopher Reeves movies, which it was meant to be in line with those movies. It was meant to be in the same universe. So it really did feel connected. Lex Luthor, who was played by, oh, he was played by, um, what's that fucker's name? How am I forgetting that guy's name? I know when his name comes up, I'm going to be like, oh, no shit. Why am I drawing a blank on his name? Oh, Kevin Spacey. Okay, yeah. I I, I knew who it was. I just couldn't think of the name. Um, but <laughs> a, lot, a lot of shady shit with Kevin Spacey past five years. But I thought he was okay as Lex Luthor. Like, I never thought he was bad as Lex Luthor. Not better than Gene, Gene Hackman. But I thought he was fine. Uh, the movie had some wonky CGI. But it was good for 2006, I think, is when it came out. So. What's your favorite villain that showed up in Spider-Man No Way? Oh, definitely Green Goblin. Definitely. Which song from the same Raimi Spider-Man movies do you like more? Hero Michael Blow Spider-Man. I don't know what half of those are. <laughs> no, see, I haven't watched any of the DCCW shows. 
I've heard of a lot of them. I haven't seen any of them. I've only haven't watched them because A, there's a million of them and it's like, I don't know how to keep up. B, they don't really matter to the grand scheme of like the DCEU. Like I tend to only like to watch the shows that actually have connections to the movies. And if it doesn't, I'd like, I don't really care that much because there's a lot of them. I would care if there was a lot of them, but there isn't. So I'm like, eh. Or, I, I mean, I said I would care if there wasn't a lot of them so I can only watch a few, but I feel like I have to pick and choose now between the ones that people say are good or not, but sometimes I don't trust what people say, so so I don't know. Uh, but I haven't watched really any of the CW shows, no. Most of them didn't look that interesting to me. There's a couple that looked decent, but some of them looked okay. I just Some of them looked pretty rough, too. I do plan on watching Daredevil because Daredevil is now connecting to the MCU, so it makes sense for me to watch it. Between Sandman and Electro, who do you feel had more of a standout in Way Home? I would say Sandman felt more like the original Sandman. I feel like Electro felt so different. Uh, he was fine in the movie. I think he was better than Sandman, but he didn't feel anything like his Amazing Spider-Man 2 counterpart to me. All right. So now we're, yeah, now we're at the DCEU. We've got everything here. We finished the Batman. We finished the Superman that's not connected to the DCEU. Obviously, you know, this is, this is a pretty solid S tier right here. I think you guys... A lot of you probably agree. I don't know. Everything else down here I think is still fine. It's pretty accurate for how I feel. And then we got Man of Steel. Man of Steel is one of those movies that I don't understand the complaints for it. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't. I hear a lot of shade thrown at Man of Steel for being too, too serious, too dark. I'm like, who the hell cares? We just had like five superman movies in a row that were very goofy and campy i like diversity that's all i like oh what the hell is that i gotta i gotta remove this unit from the channel hopefully i didn't accidentally remove someone else <laughs> that would be tragic um okay so what was i saying uh man of steel okay so i like diversity so like that's 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 the kind of things i like I don't care if it's all tonally the same throughout all movies. I don't really want them to be. I want different tones for different movies. And I liked how Man of Steel went in a different direction where they took a more serious take on Superman. And I think it worked. I think it worked. I'm putting it in S. Bottom of S, though. It's it's not going to be higher than The Dark Knight or Joker, but uh, The Dark Knight Trilogy as a whole or Joker. But it's still an S movie to me. It's probably going to end up towards the back of S, though. I, I don't think it's going to be high up in the S tier, but it's it's going to be still an S. It has to be. I love this movie for a lot of what it did. I think, I think Henry Cavill is the best Superman. I think he's the perfect Superman. I think he did a fantastic job in this movie. I think Zod in this movie is great. He's one of the best villains in the DC Universe. Love the oh Hans Zimmer soundtrack is muy bien, man. Oh my god, man. The soundtrack in this movie is so good. I mean, most of these soundtracks are good. I mean, I didn't even mention Joker's soundtrack. Joker's soundtrack is fantastic. Dark Knight trilogy obviously is also Hans Zimmer, and that's great. Danny Elfman for the Batman movies are great. But like this is just Hans, Hans Zimmer just nailed it on Man of Steel, man. That is one of my favorite soundtracks ever so <laughs> yeah no i i agree like i i don't really understand why people have such a pro problem with this movie being a little more serious and a darker take like, like people also complain about the ending they're like why is he fighting in a city and destroying buildings it's like I, I, he's fighting a freaking like alien dude like he's fighting someone from his planet who's trying to like take over the world like his last thought is and i gotta make sure to like not destroy any buildings like i don't think many people i mean probably some people died which which no no i actually think it was completely fine because they covered this in the next movie you know that's what i think made it not a big deal to me it's like yes he probably did cause some death to some people sure not him causing it but zod causing it him indirectly causing it but batman v superman literally talks about that and it, it completely covers that entire topic. It does not ignore it. You know, MCU did the same thing. You have Avengers movies where they're like destroying buildings and stuff. And then Civil War covers the that entire thing. Batman v Superman did that. And I 
next movie we're going to talk about, Bad Movie Superman. I think this is a great movie. Ultimate Edition. I have not seen the the theatrical cut. I have only seen the Ultimate Edition, and for what it was, I loved it. I don't think it's S. I do think it drags a little bit in some of the middle parts, but it's still a great movie. It's a great movie. Ben Affleck as Batman. I love. I, I don't like how he. And actually, no. Sh- screw that. I prefer Batman not killing, but I don't mind this version killing. I don't give a shit that this version kills. I don't mind that he's different. I don't need him to be the exact same. I actually like that a little bit, how there's different versions of him. Because I I believe, at least, I haven't read all the Batman comics. I've seen some. Like, I don't expect the version to be the same all around. And I don't even think in the comics he's the same all around. I think he's had some points in some of the comics where he was a bit, like, you know killing even in the 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 tim burton ones he was killing yeah whatever i have no problem with him killing that warehouse scene is one of the coolest scenes in a comic book movie ever so i don't give a shit that he's killing i like their fight i think the whole martha thing was a little iffy i'm not a big fan of how that was resolved but regardless the movie is still a great movie so i I don't care what what bias (laughs) what bias I just want to say I love your videos. Thank you so much, man. Happy holidays to you, too. Yeah, Ben Affleck, I think, is great. The only part of Ben Affleck's Batman I don't like is actually in Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's one thing he says. I just, I can never take the line seriously. I don't know why. It's when he's talking to Joker at the end of um, jo- uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, when he's talking to Joker, and he's like, He's like, I will fucking kill you. Like, I don't know. The way he says it, it's just like, I'm okay. I don't know if that was really Ben Affleck's fault or just the dialogue was weird, but I don't know. But uh, everything else about him, love him as Batman. So I I really enjoyed this movie. I just don't think it's an S-tier movie. It, it drags a little bit in the in that some of the parts. Oh, forgot to mention um, Lex Luthor in this one. It's interesting. I, I don't think he's the best Lex Luthor, not even close. But I don't mind him. I don't think he's terrible, terrible, terrible or anything. He's fine. Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm okay with him killing as long as like it depends. It depends if he like learns from it in the end. I guess I don't know. And we're still seeing more Batman. Uh, this Batman too. We're not done with him yet. We're gonna be seeing him in the Flash movie soon, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, honestly, uh, DC versus Marvel. Like, I've definitely seen more Marvel movies. I mean, look, we have these DC here. We only have like a couple DC left, and then we're already done. Definitely a lot more Marvel. I think there's more Marvel movies in general, but as a whole, you're gonna see it. It's gonna be very mixed. I'm not really like one side or the other. I think they're, I like them both equally. I don't really choose sides because I find a lot of enjoyment in both movie, uh, both franchises or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with that. I do prefer that over that <laughs> so you talk to fish line. I, I would agree with that. All right, I'm going to Suicide Squad, the, the one from 2016. I don't I don't hate this movie as much as everyone else does, I'll be honest. I really don't. I, I don't think it's good though. I'm just, I think it's average. I really I if you guys watched my ranking, I did a DCE ranking after um Suicide Squad uh this this Suicide Squad came out and I had this pretty low, but like it wasn't that low. I really thought it wasn't that bad. Whereas Hellboy, I haven't seen it. Oh, I only put stuff I've seen, obviously, because I can't really rank stuff I haven't seen yet. Other than one movie. There's one movie on here I haven't seen, Eternals. I had it on here because I was planning to see it by now, but I I never got around to it. So we're just not going to do it. But yeah, Suicide Squad, I I really don't mind it that much, to be honest. It's a very messy movie, but it's an enjoyable mess that I find has a lot of good things intertwined in it. It's just, as a whole, it doesn't really work. But, like, there's things here and there that I think really work. And honestly, a lot of it is good to me. I think 
obviously uh, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn is some of the best casting I've ever seen, and she killed it. Jared Leto as Joker. I always hear there's no way you aren't biased to DC. How does that make any sense? <laughs> what? Bias has to have some sort of a context. Like, that's what bias means. It means, like, let's say my... Let's say my... I say I say I worked for DC or something, right? Then I could be biased towards it. But like, how could I have bias for it? Like what what context would I be biased towards DC for? And that's definitely not true at all because you're going to see a lot of Marvel movies that are just as high as some of these to be honest. I I think they're equal. I don't really prefer one of the other. Eternals comes out January 12th on Disney Plus. Yeah, I did hear about that. I'm probably just going to record a reaction to it. I was going to see it in theaters, but I just never got around to it. So I was like, I'll just wait. Heath Ledger Joker is better, obviously. But I, I okay, I, I was, that's what I was saying before. Jared Leto's Joker. I always hear him being like the biggest negative about Suicide Squad, but he was literally in like four minutes of it. So like as much as I honestly personally did not mind his, his Joker, I thought it was so not Joker. But, I mean, neither is Phoenix's Joker, really. I mean, they're very different takes, and I don't mind it as a separate version of Joker. But even if you hated that version of Joker, like, how does that really affect the movie? He's in, like, four minutes of it. That's what I never understood. I've I've asked so many people, like, oh, what do you not like about Suicide Squad? And they're like, oh, Joker sucks. He's in four minutes of it. How does that ruin the movie? It's like saying Rhino from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is, like, a big flaw about that movie. Like, he has nothing to do with it. I know that's not usually people's main complaints with this movie. There's a lot of other valid complaints, and I agree with a lot of them, but I think there's a lot of positives there as well. Will Smith as as Deadshot, I think, is probably the highlight for me. I actually really wanted to see him come back, but I believe scheduling conflicts made it so he couldn't, unfortunately. Can you just put Hulk in F to save time? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Don't worry. Yeah, I've seen Spider-Man No Way Home. That's the last one we're going to talk about. Like, we're going to talk about that all the way towards the end. So, yeah, Suicide Squad, it's average. I, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's even meh. I just think it's average. I used to like it a lot more, actually. Like, when I first saw it, I I loved it. But it, it lowered a little bit as I, I rewatched it. The music's great, too. It's a great soundtrack. Decent action. You know, it's not like it's bad action or anything. Ricky Flagg's great in it, too. It's just a messy movie. But, like, I don't mind it that much, to be honest. What are with these bots? Put user in timeout. Or, no, hide user. That's what I want to do. But movie reactions are definitely next in your list. Um, Ones I've already reacted to that are going to come on the channel. Uh, there's Blade Trinity, Hunger Games. Oh, I haven't done Hunger Games yet, but I'm going to do Hunger Games. Um... I know Krampus is coming soon. I'm going to do Matrix Resurrections when that releases tomorrow. Uh, the New Mutants. I forget the other one. I have a... Do I have it here? I think I threw out, threw out the paper that had it. I had a whole list, but I threw out the paper. It's all right. Oh, oh, I I knew it because it's on the computer somewhere. But there's definitely a couple. Whatever one's recently won the poll. I forget which one's won the poll. But whichever one's won the poll. I'll definitely check um, towards the end of the stream. Oh, MKF30. Thank you for the $2 donation. Favorite heroin comic book movie ever. Oh, so like a female-led comic book movie? Uh, you'll see, actually. Actually, the next one is, is that one exactly, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman is uh, definitely... My favorite uh, female-led comic book movie. It's actually going to even go higher than Batman Begins. It's it's by far one of my favorites. It's kind of uh, funny timing how you, were, you donated that right when I was about to get to Wonder Woman. But yeah, by far my favorite female-led. It's great. I... I think this was the first DC EU movie I actually watched. Like I watched this before seeing any other ones, just randomly. I don't know why, and I loved it. Like I loved it a lot. Uh, soundtrack, the action, the character, the whole fish out of water story they did with her. How she had to like deal with the society that she wasn't used to. 
and Chris Pine was great in it too. It's just a fun movie that's just really well done, and it's actually got a lot of serious tones to it. I know people don't like the ending with the villain and the, and the reveal with Ares and stuff, but I never hated that. I, th I thought it was a little iffy, but I never hated it, though. You know, at least doing No Way Home last, as I have not seen it yet. Yeah, I'm going to do that last. I'm not going to spoil it. I can't promise that people in the chat won't spoil it, though, so I'd just be a little careful looking in the chat. Um, but I'm not going to spoil anything until I get to it, at least. Maybe not. Maybe bias is the wrong word. I should have said you don't know a good movie from a bad movie. <laughs> I think my list is pretty, like, for the most part, I don't think this is even that unpopular, to be honest. It's completely fine to disagree with me. I have no problem with that. But I don't even think my list is that unpopular. Like, Joker, Dark Knight, like, these would all be in most people's S's, I think. I think my most unpopular might be, like, putting Superman down here. Maybe putting, like this a little bit higher I, I don't know but I don't think this is that unpopular to be honest I really don't yeah Wonder Woman's incredible I love how it was able to do this story without it like they didn't under undermine the soldiers you know what I mean like that's what I really liked is because you had these World War One soldiers and I was always afraid they were just going to be like oh fuck these soldiers this the superheroes it doesn't matter about her gender I'm just talking about like I, it would be annoying to see a superhero just come in and be like Oh, I'm just gonna win this war for everybody. Fuck the fuck the soldiers. They don't mean shit. But I love how the, the soldiers were integrated into the story like incredibly well. They were actually doing a lot to help. And I love that. And I love how she's like kind of battling with them at some points because she's like, no, we should try to save as many people as possible. And they're like, no, we can't. We gotta, you know, keep doing the mission. And I like that moral dilemma that goes on with this movie. It's handled perfectly, in my opinion. I really don't have many issues with this movie. I really don't. I don't. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to Wonder Woman 84 when we get to it. Justice League is next, though. I'm going to put this in bottom, uh, top of D. Like, I don't think it's god-awful. I just think it's meh. I, I didn't enjoy it, really. This is the Justice League from 2017, not, not Zack Snyder's Justice League. I don't think it's god-awful. Like, it still has some decent production value. There's still some decent things to it. It's definitely better than everything I got down here, for sure. Because, you know, like I said, there's some there's difference between a, a bad movie that's also boring. Like, Superman 4 and Supergirl are boring and bad. But at least Justice League, there's some stuff I can be like, okay, that's kind of fun to watch, but it's still pretty terrible. Pretty, not terrible, but it's still... Certain scenes are terrible. There's certain scenes that are definitely terrible in this movie but there's also some stuff that i think is okay and therefore it's gonna get mad for me you know i can't really say there's anything about these two movies down here that are decent other than like i said i i like some of the college scenes in supergirl but that's about it you know well cam edits i don't know if i'm saying your name right it's all up to opinion there's there's no right or wrong answers you know what i mean Don't have that superiority complex with me. Your your list isn't the right, right one, man. Let's be let's be real here. Steve Trevor was an amazing love interest. Oh, he was. Uh, that was probably the best thing about the movie is that it was able to do that really damn well, and it it made you really care about their relationship. And they didn't even really have a you know the relationship relationship like in that sense, but they were like really close, and they weren't even in the movie for that long together, or they were, but. It was only it was a one hour, 45 minute movie, whatever, two hours. They made us care a lot within those two hours, which is surprising to me. Yeah, I think if I saw Justice League before seeing Zack, because I actually watched the Snyder Cut before even ever seeing this one. I only recently watched this for the first time, and I think I would have liked it maybe a little bit more if I saw it first, but I yeah, after seeing Snyder Cut, it's like you're just watching a downgraded version, so with the Justice League, so it, whatever. Aquaman. Um this is another one where I have seen a lot of criticism, but I don't get it. I don't get it. I fucking love this movie. I'm putting it right here. Right above Man of Steel. I love Aquaman, dude. It is such... 
a beautiful movie. It's visually stunning. That's that's the main thing that I think gets me every time is how stunning this movie is. It's James Wan is becoming one of my favorite directors just because of his camera work, especially in his fight scenes. Like, you know James Wan's fight scenes because they're just very distinct. They're very, like, especially that one scene in the beginning when the, the mom's taking on those soldiers. Like, the way the camera just moves around is just so good. And they do that a lot for some of the later scenes, too. And, and for a, uh, as a whole, like, the movie has some good stuff. There's a one part in the uh, middle I don't love where it's mainly just um, Aquaman and Amber Heard's character just walking around the like the the sand, the the deserts. They're just looking for the thing. That's the only part of the movie that I think is a little bit slow. But it's still like they have some. They don't have the best chemistry in the world. It's definitely not my favorite relationship with characters ever. I don't know if that's Amber Heard's fault or they just don't have chemistry. I don't know, <laughs> but it's not terrible. But everything in Atlantis. And the action scenes, especially against uh, Ocean Master towards the end. Oh, Black Manta. Oh my god, Black Manta's awesome in this. Black Manta is awesome. No, I've not seen the animated series version. I've only seen one animated superhero movie that's just Spider-Verse. I'm sorry to the animated movie lovers, but there's not many on here. <laughs> that's all I'll say. C must be the category for weird rock music soundtrack films. Sort of. Yeah, no, Aquaman's one of my one of my favorites. It's just a lot of fun. It doesn't really take itself seriously all that much, but it still has some story to tell for a lot of it, though. So, I have fun with it. I mean, you could tell I I like the DCEU just by looking at this. Like, I, there's a lot of DCEU I like. You know, I, I don't think it's nearly as bad as people make it out to be. So. Shazam, though. That's the next one we got. I, I'm i going to put it right here. I'm going to put it right here. I think I'd prefer Batman just a little bit more. But I, I think Shazam's solid. It's a really fun movie. I think my only issue is some of the humor... Some of the humor is great. It's definitely a much more comedic movie. It's definitely meant to be very more... Um, family friendly, you know, type movie, but some of the comedy because it's trying to be more family friendly doesn't land for me, and it's not that funny. It's something you'd laugh when you're watching with like you know kids and stuff, but I, I never found it most of the humor that funny. But for just a family story, it's really good. I love the uh dynamic between Billy and all the other kids and such, and how. He's like, you know, adopted and he eventually, like he hates them in the beginning. He's like, I don't want anything to do with this family. And then as the, you know, movie progresses, he eventually grows to like them. And then he like calls them a family at the end. Like that stuff is beautiful. That's my favorite thing about the movie for sure. The villain's fine. You know, the whole seven deadly sins thing was kind of cool, but I mean, he's not the most interesting villain in the world, but for what it was, it was fine. I think the action is pretty good. Except for some of it. I, I, I watched the whole video on this, actually. There's some grounded action scenes that I really like, but I think some of the in-the-air action scenes are kind of iffy. It's kind of like Man of Steel, where it's just... It, it feels almost just like Man of Steel, where it's just two flying people pushing each other into buildings, which I think Man of Steel was fine with the way it did it because it got to some grounded parts here and there, but I think, that, I think the grounded fights are way better. I never was a fan of flying fights i think it's just so much better when they're grounded grounded not in terms of realism i mean grounded in terms of literally on the ground <laughs> you know what i mean it's, it's still a great movie and then when all the kids turn into other versions of shazam that was great too oh you definitely need to catch up on joker joker is a goddamn masterpiece and you know, we, we talked about that enough but fucking love that movie shazam's solid it's solid i just don't think i'd put it higher than that though now, Birds of Prey, I must be in the minority with this one because I think a lot of people like this more than I do. I was never all on board with this movie. I don't think it's bad, though. I'm going to put it literally just below Suicide Squad. Yes, I slightly prefer Suicide Squad. Slightly. 
I, I think both movies are very similar. They have very similar feels and tones too, but I think this movie would have benefited from just dropping the Birds of Prey and just making it a Harley Quinn movie because they added all these other characters that I don't think they properly progressed all that well. Some of them they did, some of them they didn't. And so it kind of felt disjointed at the end where they all kind of came together, but I feel like most of them I didn't really give a shit about or most of them weren't even people we knew all that well. So it was kind of just like, yeah, I barely seen you. You know, you show up in a scene and you're just like expecting me to like be on board with it. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm on board with it just yet. So I think it could have benefited from just being a Harley Quinn movie. The action's really good. It's more ground grounded action. It's very well choreographed and such. I think the villain, although I love, 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 love Ewan McGregor. I do. I don't think it was woke. I, I don't know. People use the woke term too much. I don't. I don't really think it was. It was that. When I, when I when I hear the word woke, I think I think of like something that's actively trying to throw a political message down the viewers' throats. I don't think there really was one of those here. I, I'm just women kicking ass. I don't think it's woke. But but to be fair, like I I think my issue with with Ian McGregor was that he wasn't a good contrast to. Harley Quinn. I really like when they have a contrasted villain, like Guardians of the Galaxy did that very well, where you have very goofy characters, and then you contrast that with Ronan, who is this very serious dude, and it makes it makes scenes a lot more funnier. But Birds of Prey, I mean, Black, not Black, uh, what was his name? Was, is it Black Mask? Is that the dude's name? Well, Ewan McGregor's character. He's just as goofy as her, and it's just like comes across as just doesn't really work all that well. It doesn't contrast well. So I don't know. But I thought it's an enjoyable movie. I didn't hate it. It's fine. Which is why it's an average, because average would also be considered fine to me. I don't know. <laughs> The Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises versus Birds of Prey. Why, why is that a question? You you can tell right here what I would prefer. <laughs> I've seen some people say Birds of Prey is pretty solid. I, I don't know. I thought I was in the minority there. I'm not sure. Yeah, there was a whole Sonic movie versus Birds of Prey thing because they came out around the same time. I always thought that was so stupid. Original Superman movie in C. Seriously, what's its real rating? Um, it's actually supposed to be up here. You're right. You got me. You got me, dude. Black Mask. Guess I was right. Okay. All right. Wonder Woman 84. Um, bottom of good. Bottom of good. I th I didn't really hate this movie as much as some people did. Actually, no. Maybe I should put it top of average. I've only seen it once. Okay, I'm going to put it bottom of good. I went into this movie with the lowest expectations ever because everyone told me it was absolute garbage. And I enjoyed it. I really didn't think it was that bad. I thought Pedro Pascal's villain was interesting. He wasn't great, but he was interesting. I thought Cheetah was... Uh, she looked weird, but that how you, how you can make Cheetah not look weird? It was campier. Definitely, but I think it worked. You know, I loved the atmosphere. I loved the 80s. I think Chris Pine being in someone else's body was weird. I don't, well, not really. It was Chris Pine's character in someone else's body. It was, we, we saw it as Chris Pine. I always thought that was so weird. They should have just, I knew they wanted to bring Chris Pine back because it's Chris Pine, but they could have left him out. I think it would have been better. <laughs> it was fun to have, but it's like the whole time you're thinking, She's not even looking at Chris Pine. She's literally looking at someone else's body. It's so weird. Are you going to react to DC animated films? Maybe someday. I don't know. It's really, it's really not that bad. I don't know. I think people shit on movies way too much. You, you guys know that. I'm more positive when it comes to movies, clearly, because I haven't hated that many movies. It's kind of hard for me to hate a movie. So if I do hate it, it's probably done something really bad. <laughs> Like, I judge them. I judge things that I love a lot more harshly, I feel like. But I don't give them bad ratings just because I judge them. Like, I'll, I give a lot of criticism to Spider-Man No Way Home. And I still gave it, like, a 9.5. So, 
I'm not talking about it. No, no spoilers right now, but I'm just saying I gave a 9.5 out of 10. I still had a lot of criticisms though. Now we get Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, it's going to go in S. Probably right in front of The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. This is a long damn movie. It's the longest movie on this list, which works because it's not in theaters. So it's okay. You can watch it in parts. I've seen many people who watch it in parts, and it works pretty well that way. I saw this before ever even seeing the first Justice League, so I went into it without even knowing anything about it, and I think that definitely made my experience a lot better. Way too generous on these rankings. Hey, I love I love these movies, man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I love comic book movies, and that's very clear because I don't feel like I hate many of these. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I can't force myself not to like them. You know, I, I like that's the thing. Like I'm, I'm just gonna go based on how I feel, and I can't force myself to dislike them just because people tell me I'm being too generous. You know what I mean? I just can't do that. I like it. I like it. It's just how it's gonna be. But yeah, uh, Jack Snyder, Zack Snyder's Justice League, the way it tells this story and is able to introduce us to new characters within this four-hour time frame is really insane. What about Batman Forever? Bro, just take a gander at the list. You can see it right here. <laughs> um, The way they're able to just develop some characters that we've never even seen before and make us care about them within a couple hours is pretty is pretty awesome. Like I loved Cyborg in this. I loved Flash in this. I loved Ben Affleck even as Batman even more in this. Henry Cavill Superman. I mean, he comes back like halfway through the film, but even then, he's incredible for that last half that he's in, especially with that awesome black suit. You get a little cameo of Joker at the end there, which was fine. Uh, you get cameo of Dark Side, which was cool. Freaking. So much better, Steppenwolf, in this one. So much better than he was in Justice League the uh, 2017. He was so much better in this one. He was a menacing man that scared the shit out of me. The movie was R as well, so they were able to add some brutal blood and gore. You had scenes with Steppenwolf just axing people. And it was like, damn, this is good. The action was really well done. It was a visually stunning movie. That ending was incredible incredible with with flash turning back time and all that that was just all oh, the music too junkie xl just such a good soundtrack it's just amazing man i it's it's hard not to praise it when it's as good as it is so all right Su the suicide squad uh the suicide squad i'm gonna put it top of great just above batman v superman I had some issues with this movie. I had some issues with some of the villainous stuff and also the fact that some of the characters I don't think got proper development as I wish they did, proper screen time and such. But as a whole, this is probably the funniest movie on this list. Maybe not. Deadpool might be funnier. Funniest movie we have so far. Out of all the movies up here, I think The Suicide Squad's the funniest on here. It's got some nice R-rated humor. John Cena... By, uh, peace, by as Peacemaker is probably my favorite part of the movie. I'm so excited for that Peacemaker show because he freaking nailed it. He was hilarious at every scene he was in. Ricky Flag was great, much better than he was in the first one. Um, Idris Elba was fucking great as Bloodsport. Harley Quinn was fantastic. You had, you know, King Shark. Ratcatcher was great. There's a lot of good characters in this movie that really just drew me in. And I had a great time with it. It was just some of those flaws. I don't know. The Starfish was a cool villain, but I didn't love the whole story behind. Not, not. I, I didn't hate it. I just didn't love the, exactly the story behind it. I guess. Superman, nineteen seventy-eight. The only movie where I actually forgot Superman and Clark Kent were the same person. I've never had that happen in a superhero movie. Really. When is Peacemaker coming out? January. Early January, so a couple weeks. Not that soon. Or, not that soon. I mean, 
not that far. That's what I meant. It was great. I loved it. I love Suicide Squad. I think it was solid. James Gunn did a good, 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 good work with it. I, I didn't like it as much as I hope I did, though. I would have probably put it A, but or S. I would have wished to put it at S, but I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it an S, an A. Or is the price C? Is that too high or too low for you? I don't know. All right, we're done with the DCEU. We only got three DC movies left. These are like just DC solo movies that didn't, they weren't really attached to anything. They were just kind of on their own. Uh, will I be reacting to Birds of Prey better than Joker? All right, get out of here. No, I'm kidding. You, ha you have opinions. You can have whatever opinion you want, but. <laughs> uh, will I be reacting to Peacemaker? If people want it, I guess. I wouldn't mind. Catwoman. Um, I'll be honest, not as awful as people say, but it's still pretty meh. I'm going to put it right here. And I'll put it right there. I don't think it's bad, but it's like, yeah. I had some fun with it. Very surface level fun. Very, very surface level fun. Some of the directing was really bad, just like, just, just bad, but it at least has some decent production value. Again, I, you have to be really bad to put, put an F. Like, if you guys are like, why isn't he putting that many movies in F? There's some stuff on here that deserves F way more, man, way more. Like, there's some stuff in here that you'll be like, all right, you, I'm sure there's stuff in here you guys haven't even seen before. Like, I only watched it because I just wanted to get more superhero knowledge, I guess. But there's just some really shitty stuff in here that deserves F way more than, than, than Catwoman does. Even though Catwoman's not very good. It's at least got some production value. There's at least some entertainment. Yeah, Halle Berry is much better than the X-Men, obviously. But she's still okay here. I, I She was probably the only actress in this movie that I, I thought was decent. Only actor in general. So, I... I don't really mind. I didn't mind the movie as much as other people did. Watchmen now. Zack Snyder's Watchmen. This is one that... Was a pretty long movie as well. I think Zack Snyder just likes long movies. Uh, Black Widow better be A or above. Uh, probably not, but... <laughs> We'll make that decision when we get there. I think Watchmen is such a unique movie. It's so different. It's so, so different. Catwoman is so bad that I didn't want to finish watching it even when Halle Berry is dressed in leather. Is she going to end at midnight? Oh, probably, yeah. I, we got a lot to go. Some of these movies we're going to shoot through, though. Some of these movies I don't want to talk about for that long because they're movies I don't really care about that much. Watchmen is solid. I, I did see the director's cut. It was the, the director's cut. I'm going to put it right here, though. I still think it's not perfect because there are some scenes that I think maybe dragged a little bit, but not, not like in a terrible way because it's still great. Owl Watch, thank you for the $2 donation. I appreciate it. Would you greenlight a sequel for Catwoman? No, I would not. I would greenlight a reboot, maybe. Like, we have a Catwoman coming to the new Batman movie. I would be like, eh, maybe we'll do a little spinoff movie for her. I'm sure, but not, not, not sequel to that one, though. No. <laughs> yeah, Watchmen was great. Jeffrey Dean Morgan was one of my favorite parts of it. Oh, fucking, oh my god, um, Jackie Earl Haley, oh, he was probably the best part, actually. Loved him in this movie. You also had Owen Wilson, who was great, too. There's a lot of just great actors in this movie, great actresses. It was such a, it was just so unique, though. Like, that, that's what I think really gets me to this movie, is because it's a one-off movie, there's no franchise connected to it, it's just a one-off thing. It's its own story. I've never read the Watchmen comics. I've heard really good things about them. And it's such a deep movie, too. It plays out of chronological order at some parts. You get flashbacks, a lot of that. And 
it, it it's awesome it's really awesome it's not like a movie you're gonna watch just to watch the action though because it's not all about the action i thought the ending was a little weird though with the blue dude <laughs> some, of the, some of the stuff with the blue dude was a little weird you just had his dick hanging out for like half the movie but it's all right i will admit one thing i liked about catwoman i really did like her proto suit before she wore her final suit yeah i, I did too Did I say Owen Wilson? Yeah, Patrick Wilson. <laughs> Owen Wilson is the fucking completely different dude. You're right. You're right. Now, V for Vendetta is not on this list for two reasons. A, I haven't seen it. And B, this is comic book superhero movies, not just comic book movies. So it has to be a comic book and a superhero movie for it to be on the list. What about No Way Home? At eh, bottom of the list. We're, we'll, we'll get to it. We're only doing DC right now. We'll get to Marvel. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I've heard about the Watchmen series a lot, yeah. It'd be interesting. I do want to check it out. I just haven't gotten around to it. And the last DC movie that I've seen, these are these are going to be all the DC movies, is The Green Lantern. I'll put it right below Catwoman. Right below Catwoman. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's incredibly meh. Incredibly meh. It's a uh, pretty meh movie i don't think there's many redeeming factors but at least ryan reynolds is kind of fun to watch and that's about it i'm sure if i watch this again i'll probably hate it and probably put it enough but i've only seen it once so <laughs> at least i can be like i've only seen it once it's only tortured me once I, I can't say it's tortured me that many times but yeah they just had his dick out for half the movie it's kind of funny <laughs> <clears throat> all right well this is the dc movies that i've seen all of them right here you could take a screenshot or something i don't fucking i don't fucking know yet i don't expect people to take screenshots of my list no one gives a shit but that's that's my dc ranking um most of it's an s not most of it's an s but most of it's an s or a Clearly, because I, I do like a lot of these movies. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I do. Some of them are also pretty bad, though. Pretty pretty rough. Now we got two independent movies on here. We got only two independent movies. Movies that aren't Marvel. They're not DC. And that's the kick-ass movies. I am so happy. I don't know if you guys have heard, but they have just announced, Matthew Vaughn announced, they're work. They're gonna work on. They're, they're in the planning process of a kick-ass reboot. I would have preferred a kick-ass three, but I'll take what we can get. I'll take what we can get. If all we're gonna get is a, a reboot, sure. I love kick-ass. The, the kick-ass comics. That's one of the only comics I have actually read. I love it. I can't wait to see it. Kick-ass is definitely one of my favorite movies on this list. It's going up here. It's going above Zack Snyder Justice League. It's not going above the Dark Knight or Joker. The Dark Knight and Joker are really hard to touch. But Kick-Ass is such a good movie. I am so happy I embarked on watching this movie back in 2015 or whatever. I, I don't know when I watched it, but I watched it just on a random day i think i was i had like a chloe grace moretz phase where i watched her in carrie and i was like oh i gotta watch her in every movie now and i watched her in this and then the second one and i just love this freaking movie man it is a grounded not really serious it's still pretty goofy but it's grounded in terms of there's no superpowers none of that it's just a real world scenario of some random ass kid Wanting to be a superhero. And the key, the thing is, what it, why it works so well is because this random ass kid is us. He's the nerd. He's the guy who loves comic books and stuff. So it's literally us. And he's the one who wants to like be a superhero and stuff. And that's why it's a very relatable movie. And I, I it works perfectly in that sense. Al Watch, thank you for the $5 donation. I'm just joining. I'm shocked Shazam is not perfect. Respect your opinion. But it was amazing, especially at the ending. They're super... Yeah, I know. I, I, it was a pretty solid movie. I just... I think the only thing keeping it out of S for me... Some of the flying action scenes I didn't love, and the villain itself I don't think was like the most like greatest villain ever. Also, some of the humor I thought fell short for me, but everything else was perfect. So like it it, it was cl it's close to being an S, but it's just not quite there, unfortunately. Yeah. 
What about Lego Batman? If if it's not on the list, I haven't seen it. Trust me, I I made sure to include every comic book superhero movie I've ever seen on this list. So if, if it's not on the list, that means I just haven't seen it. Simple as that. Or I don't consider it a comic book superhero movie, but I all of these are. So Kick-Ass Reboot with Timothy Chalamet. Nah, I don't see uh, Timothy Chalamet. I don't think he'd fit that. I feel like you need someone who's nerdier. He he seems more of like a, a cool dude, you know what I mean? I, I couldn't see Timothy Chalamet as playing a nerdy, like, I don't know. I just don't think I could see it. I don't know who the other girl is, though, so I'm going to look her up. What would you want her to play? She ain't playing Hit Girl. She's 24. <laughs> Hit Girl's got to be like 10. <laughs> Especially if you want to do a lot of sequels, because... I feel like Hit Girl's got to be kind of young, right? You can't have her be old. She's supposed to be a badass little girl. Unless you mean Madeline Klein as like, a, um, what's her name? As Katie. No, oh, that could work maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> Joker's, I don't know. It's not, it's not a good movie. It's a, it's a near perfect movie. Kick-ass inventing the mill camel tall call it the frog eye. That's one of my favorite scenes. That was in the second one, but it was still great. Yeah, no, I I love this movie. It's, it's just I I love the way the story plays out. It's such a fast movie. It's paced perfectly. I would say the pacing of Kick-Ass is some of the best movie pacing ever. It's not slow, it's not too fast. It's perfect. It just goes all the right beats, all the right moments, and it plays the story out exactly the way it should. And I love how it plays out. I love how it ends up being Kick-Ass's fault for big daddy's death and i love how that kind of causes this situation where hit girl has to like go in and just try to attack uh the, the dude's like house and the action is so good the action is so fucking good oh my god oh my god the action is so good kick uh hit girl just kicking ass is the most fun you could have watching a movie i don't know what to tell you i don't know what to tell you it's so much fun Kick-Ass 2, um, I think is incredibly underrated. Uh, this is one of the most underrated movies to me. Do I think it's bad? Or, I mean, do I think it's good? Like, really good? No. But I'm gonna at least give it top of... I'm gonna put it right, like, right in here. Yeah, that, that's good. I don't think Kick-Ass 2 is that bad. I think it's a good movie. I don't think it's great, though. My only issues with it, some of the humor was off. You had a couple jokes that were, like, kind of just... You, why'd you make that joke? <laughs> you had a couple scenes that were, like, not as entertaining as the first one. You had a whole story with... I, I didn't mind this. I had a whole thing with Hit Girl going to high school. I didn't mind that. I thought it was actually okay. Um, but some of the way they play with it wasn't, wasn't the best. They don't exactly have great payoffs for it, but as a whole, this movie is just as fun as the first one to me. It's just not as well written. I think is the way I would put it. Like I, I would watch kick-ass two just as much as I would watch kick-ass one. It's just kick-ass one has much better writing and storytelling and directing and action. And, and so it just, it just ends up being a little bit, a bit better. Um, but in terms of entertainment, I get just as much enjoyment out of the second one as i do the first one so what about the flash as far as i'm concerned there's no flash movie so uh, yeah there's the, the show but there might be a cartoon animated flash movie i don't know i haven't seen it though could you see aquaman and orm having a similar relationship to thor and loki i hope they do but make it different at the same time possibly yeah i could see it it's like that brotherly love but still kind of hating each other at the same time i'm really excited for aquaman too so i'm i'm excited to see how that plays out one of my, one of my most anticipated movies of next year actually superhero movies a parody oh no i've seen it i've seen that movie it's fucking hilarious i love superhero movie but it's it's not on here because it's not really a comic book movie it's not really based off a comic universe it's just a parody of a comic universe so i don't really think that counts All right, we're officially on to Marvel. 
I want to talk about Kick-Ass more, but I, I'd be talking about it all day, and I don't want to be here all day. So we're, we'll be we'll be done with that for now. Marvel. We've we've got a lot of we've got a lot of Marvel stuff here. Um, the entire MCU, all the Spider-Man movies, all the X-Men movies, and a lot of just other properties, other solo things and stuff. <clears throat> First of all, let's start off with the Punisher. This is 1989, The Punisher. I'm sure a lot of you haven't even seen this. Not a very popular movie. It's not a very good movie either. Did you see Shazam? I don't. I don't like getting mad at people, but bro, just look on the damn screen. It's right here. <laughs> it's right there. Just take a little. Just, 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 just do a little. Uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, a scan of the screen, real quick. Um, but the Punisher 1989, it's, yeah, it's bad. I'm sorry. I I, I saw some people, I, I've read reviews of it after watching it. And people were like, you could tell literally every positive review of the movie was someone who was just incredibly nostalgic for it. That was the, literally the only positive people could say, oh, this is my childhood watching this movie in the 80s. That doesn't make it a good movie. I'm sorry. It's just not good. I tried it and I'm just like, what the fuck is this? It had some of the worst action I've ever seen for starters. The story wasn't good either. The man's voice was so monotone. I know the actor uh, is actually a pretty good actor. I've, I've heard of him in other things he's actually pretty good in, but in this one, he was garbage. I'm sorry. He played the most... I know Punisher's not supposed to be a uppity guy, but he's not supposed to be fucking, like, dead. I, I know he's supposed to be, like, depressed because, you know, his family died, but, like, shit, he doesn't have to be, like, this complete monotone emotionless being it just doesn't come off across as very charismatic in any way shape or form i thought the other versions of punisher actually did so i don't know it had a really low budget yeah it, it was quite the low i mean it was also made in the 80s but the thing is you compare this came out in 89 compared to the to batman 89 then it's okay batman 89 has this really awesome gotham city and it was really really cool the way it's designed in terms of some of their fight scenes and such and this movie is just like really schlocky 80s action that just doesn't come across as entertaining at all it's it's just not good i'm sorry i'm sorry they also skip over the origin which i don't mind skipping over origins for some superhero movies but this was the first punisher movie they ever released so it's like you should have just you should have done the origin they, they talk about it but they don't do it now, The Punisher from 2004. This was one of the most surprising movies to me. I actually really enjoyed it, and I'm going to go as far as to say it's a good movie. It's bottom of good. I did not expect to like this movie. I was expecting all three of The Punisher movies to be garbage. Just what I expected, because I never heard of them, really. I just, I've heard of the show. I just never heard that there was even movies of them. So I'm like, oh, these movies are probably pretty bad. But 2004 is The Punisher not that bad not that bad i gotta say it's really not that bad it does the origin story so you get a full origin you get to see his family getting murdered which was very brutal and sad but it's it's done really well it's a brutal movie too it's r-rated so you got really good action it's got it's such an interesting movie because it's made in 2004 but it feels like it was made in the 80s but not in a bad way not in a way where it's like Oh, this is shitty. It looks like it's from the 80s. No, it, it looks like it's like paying homage to 80s action movies in the way that the movie's directed. And I was really surprised by that. Will you react to Morbius? No, because it's only releasing in theaters. I don't think it's releasing online. It might release online months later, but I'm actually really excited to see that. So I didn't really want to wait for it, to be honest. Unless it was going to come out like a month later, but I don't. I feel like they're probably going to have it a couple months later for it to come out online so i'll definitely do a review though but yeah no this movie was actually solid um surprisingly solid to be honest but then the punisher war zone which was the sequel to this it was kind of the same universe but it was like a soft reboot in a sense i i didn't like it as much I'd probably put it, like, down here. It wasn't, like, bad, though. It was average. I don't know. Not as good as 
definitely not as good as the one for 2004. But it, yeah, I mean, it, there was moments I enjoyed. It, it definitely felt more like an early 2000s shitty action movie, though. This one felt more like a really solid, well done, like 80s action movie. It's, it, I don't know. The Punish movies weren't the greatest things I've ever seen, but there was some I, about them I enjoyed. So. I'm glad I watched them. Captain America 1990. Uh, this movie's garbage. <laughs> Have you guys seen this Captain America from 1990? I'm sure a lot of you don't even know it exists because it's not a very popular movie. No one talks about it. People forget it existed, and I think rightfully so. It's not very good. It's not very good. I watched it like last night, actually. I'm not even lying. I literally watched it last night just so I can add it to this list. And what the fuck, man? I don't know. It just wasn't good. There was nothing redeemable about it to me. You know what? I'll put it above Superman 4, actually. I'll give it that. But it's just, it's bad. It's just so, like, so shittily done in every way, shape, and form. And you can't give me the excuse, oh, it was made in the 90s. Oh, uh, well, so was Batman Returns. So was uh, Superman 2 was made way before this. Superman 1 was made way before this, Batman 89 was made before this, and they're all much better. So I don't give a shit that it was made in 1990, it was still crap. The only positive I can give about it, Red Skull actually looked really cool in it. I actually think his design in this movie was better than how he looks in the first Avenger, in the MCU, Captain America. I, legitimately, like their, their makeup for Red Skull in this was really cool, Like I thought it looked really well done. That's about it. Everything else was just stupid. It was just stupid. I don't know. It was it was not, not, not a good movie. There's this really funny scene that's so shittily done. Is shittily even a word? I use it all the time and I don't even care. Um, there's this really stupid thing he does twice. Captain America does this twice in the movie where he pretends like he's going to throw up in the car and then he gets out of the car He's, he only, only does this when he wants to steal someone's car because, he, I guess, he does it the first scene because he doesn't trust the guy in the car. So he's like, oh, I got to get out of the car. So he pretends he's, like he's going to throw up. He's like, the actor is terrible, too. No offense to the actor. He might be a good actor in other movies, but in this one, he's bad. And he's like, I have to throw up. I think I'm going to be sick. And then the guy pulls over. He gets out, and he's, like, pretending to throw up. And then when the guy gets out to check on him, then he, go run, he runs in and steals the guy's car and drives off. He does that twice. He does it to... Uh, Sharon Carter towards the end of the movie. It's just a bad movie. I don't know what to tell you. I, I didn't have fun watching it, and I didn't really expect to. Only Marvel DC movies I've put in S are Logan, The Dark Knight, Joker, and Spider-Man 2. I got a lot more in there. Clearly, I, I, I do like a lot of superhero movies, so... All right, now we're on to Blade. Blade 1, I'm going to put top of good. I think Blade was solid. It was a solid movie. Can't complain much about it, to be honest. I don't think it was the greatest thing ever. Um, I love the vampire shit. I don't know. It's so different than any other superhero movie. I mean, it's a very horror feeling movie. It would probably be considered a horror movie to a lot of people. I don't know if I'd consider it a horror movie, but it feels like a horror movie in a lot of aspects because you have some really, you know, kind of scary shit happening with some of these vampires. The action's great. I mean, Wesley Snipes just kills it in this role. Whistler was fun to watch. He was one of the cooler characters, and I did not expect him to be as interesting as he was, but he was. But honestly, I like the second one better. I'll take it off my sweatshirt real quick. It's kind of getting hot in here. All right, but the second one, yeah, I'm going to put it higher. Definitely an A. Blade 2 was definitely better. I, I think it was better because not only were, were the villains more interesting, I really liked the Reapers and that whole story, but also... I felt like the characters were just more established, so they just felt more comfortable in their roles, and they felt like they were having more fun with it. So that was something that I... And there was a different director, I believe, for this movie, and I think he did even even better job with a lot of it as well. I can't see the bottom movies. You have 
as choices. Did you watch Constantine? I haven't seen Constantine, so no, it's not on the list. I do want to watch that, though. I've heard of it with Keanu Reeves. I've just never seen it. Dude, what are with these bots? Does everyone get these bots, or is it just me? Because they are very common. Well, see, the thing is, I mean, even though I still would consider these S movies regardless of, like, what movies were in here, because it's just comic book movies, that's what I'm rating them on. I'm rating them on how good are they as comic book superhero movies, not necessarily as just movies in general. Like, obviously, everything, I'm taking it into account every aspect of the movie, but when you compare it in its own genre, I feel like it's different, like, than comparing it to other genres, you know what I mean? So... All right, what was I talking about? I was talking about Blade 2. So yeah, Blade 2 I think is better than Blade 1, but not by a ton. Blade Trinity, I just watched this. It's not on the channel yet because I haven't edited the reaction yet, but it's on Patreon for the full uncut. And I didn't hate it. I really didn't. I'm going to put it like bottom of average. I didn't think it was god awful. I, I really thought it was going to be god awful, but Jessica Biel was cool. I liked Ryan Reynolds, even though his humor was way, way too much. Way too much. Uh, he's funny. There's a lot of lines I laughed at, but at the same time, I'm like, there was a certain point in the movie where I was like, all right, chill with the, with, with the dick jokes, man. Like, it's every, it's every sentence now. <laughs> but I still had fun with it. I thought Jessica Biel was probably the best part besides Wesley Snipes. And I didn't mind the villains. I didn't think they were awful in that whole story but it's not as good as the first two obviously will this be posted as a video afterwards yes uh, all my live streams sh should always do that automatically i think i'll also put like time codes for like certain stuff so i'll be like okay this is when the dc stuff starts this is when the marvel stuff starts just so people can get around it a little bit easier maybe Yeah, I think critics do down... I think a lot of people in general downplay comic book movies. Like, people look at them and they're like, oh, they're comic book movies, so they must just be schlocky, f random fun with people in tights and just random action. But I think there's a lot more depth to these movies. You just gotta look for it. I think a lot of them do have that. I think that's what the better... Like, D and F, I could agree. Like, yes, yeah, some of these are just there to just be like oh just here's just a bunch of random people shooting lasers into the sky and stuff but like some of these top ones like i think s for example this entire thing all these movies i i could tell you that they have something to say they do i mean aquaman i guess kind of does but they all have themes they'll have themes that are explored they'll have characters that are well developed and even if they're not at least some of them are just really damn fun. And at the end of the day, that's what movies are for. Movies are definitely fun to analyze and talk about the depth behind them. But at the end of the day, they're there for entertainment. That That's the main thing they're there for. And people don't usually realize that, but that is the number one thing they're there for. They're there for entertainment. So a movie could be an absolutely master, masterfully written movie. But if it's like boring, it's, it's not going to be something the audiences really care for. That's just how it works. And I think comic book movies do a really good job of keeping people invested all the way through. While, to me, still telling pretty damn good stories. You know, some of them are definitely goofier than others, but I don't think goofy makes it bad. And some of them are just straight up serious, gritty, grounded movies like The Dark Knight and Joker. And I mean, Kick-Ass isn't serious, but it's definitely grounded. In terms of, you know, certain certain aspects of it. All right, so we finished Blade. Now we got a bunch of other Marvel things before we get to the X-Men stuff, a bunch of just other Marvel things. Here's Hulk from 2003. I This movie was, okay, I've said before I don't mind movies being too long, but Hulk was way too fucking long. Hulk was way too long. I might put this in F, actually. No, bottom of D. 
I don't know. It, it was pretty rough. Danny Elfman's soundtrack was pretty good, though. That helps it a little bit. It wasn't very good. No Way Home S-Tier or we Riot. We'll see. We're almost there, actually. Not really. This doesn't look like a lot, but it's probably going to be a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put Hulk in bad. I don't know. I, I don't think it's like... It's not top... It's going to be top of bad. So at least it's like the best of the bad movies. That's that's what I'll give Hulk. I'll, I'll call it the best of the bad movies. Danny Elfman's theme helps it out a lot, for sure. Daredevil. This is Ben Affleck as Daredevil. I don't know if you guys have seen this one from 2003. I don't think this was awful. I think it's honestly like the same quality as like Catwoman. So I'm going to put a little bit above Catwoman. It's still pretty meh. But like, I, I don't know. A lot of the early Marvel stuff was rough. Like you had the only good Marvel stuff from like before the MCU was Blade. Like Blade 1 and Blade 2. Some of the X-Men stuff and Spider-Man. Everything else for Marvel was just bad, but like pretty rough for the most part. I, li I like the Punisher, actually. The Punisher is one of the ones that I also liked. I, I don't see this one getting much love, to be honest. Is each tier in order? Yeah, they're, they're in order. I'm putting them in order as I go. From left to right, so like Joker is the best, and then it goes all the way there, you know. You ever seen Watchmen? Well, Watchmen's right here, so yeah. V for Vendetta, I don't have here because I haven't seen it, and also because, I mean, I don't know, I haven't seen it, but is it a comic, is it, is it, is it, I know it's a comic book movie, but is it a superhero movie, though? I only wanted to include things that are comic book movies and superhero movies, not just one or the other, just to make it easier so I don't have like a thousand bajillion movies on here. Is the, the original Daredevil the one with Bullseye? Yeah, uh, Colin Farrell. Which he's a good actor, but that just role was not for him. <laughs> it was not for him. Electra. Didn't hate it as much as I thought I would, but yeah, it's still pretty rough. I'll put it right here in between. In between Daredevil and Catwoman, it's still pretty rough. Al Watch. Every thank you for the five dollar man. Every nineties, two thousands Marvel movie should be its own universe. Hulk, Daredevil. Yeah, Fantastic Four Blade, Toby. Oh, I forgot Fantastic Four. I actually don't hate those movies that much. We'll talk about those in a second, though. But I don't think they exist in their own universe, though. They could, theoretically. No, X-Men couldn't exist with Spider-Man. Oh, you mean do you mean its own universe, or do you mean its universe together? Because that wouldn't make sense for them to be together, because you couldn't have the X-Men stuff working with Toby's Spider-Man. It just that wouldn't work, but... Electra, I thought, had some fun moments, but, like, that's about it. I definitely plan on watching V for the Vendetta. I'm, I've had it on my list for a while, so. That made me Superman at A? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Alright, now we got four Fantastic Four movies. I cannot wait for the next one because they need to do a really good one because i'm sick of these subpar movies fantastic four from 1994 i'm sure many of you have not seen this movie it is the worst movie on this list by far i there's nothing can get worse than fantastic four from 1994 <laughs> there's nothing that's gonna get worse than that one oh my god like when i hear people saying Oh, like, I hear, like, people always say, like, extreme, I mean, it's your opinion, your opinion, but people are like, oh, Suicide Squad's the worst superhero movie ever, oh, Venom's the worst superhero movie ever, oh, but, like, if you tell me that, I'm just gonna assume you haven't seen Fantastic Four from 1994. I'm just gonna assume that, because this is just so bad. I don't know how anyone in their right mind can enjoy it, but if you do, that's completely fine. Why is my dog barking outside the door? Um, but like I said, this movie I watched, I actually, was. you know what's funny about it? I looked up some behind the scenes stuff. This movie wasn't even supposed to exist. It only existed so they can keep the rights 
to Fantastic Four. So they didn't even they didn't make it out of passion. They didn't make it out of love for the story. They made it, which I know all movies are made to make money, but there's still some, you know, level of passion there. But this this you could tell they put together within probably a couple weeks. None of it looks good. It's all trash. It's, the story's not even there. It has a oh no, it has a good soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. That's it. Everything else was terrible though. It had actually really good music. I don't know who the composer was, but he did a good. He he put in some work. No, the reboot's even better. Yeah, I I didn't. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I would prefer that over this trash. It's just not a good movie. The acting is awful too between every single one of them. I don't know. Not a very good movie. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Doctor Doom sucks in this too. But now Fantastic Four, the one that was from two thousand four or five, whatever it came out. I'm nostalgic for this. I watched it when I was really young. And I rewatched it recently just to remind myself of what it was like. I don't think this is that bad of a movie. I'm actually going to probably put it right here. And good. I think it's a good movie. It's very campy, very ridiculous. Very ridiculous. But I think it works. I think it works. I think people judge these the wrong way. They look at them as... Oh, we want a serious movie, but it's not serious. It's so it's so ridiculous, but I think it works. I'm sorry, it works. For me, it works. I think the casting is all really good. Chris Evans as Johnny Storm is really good. Jessica Alba was really good. I honestly like how the thing looks in this one, even though it's not as comic accurate as it could be, but it's I don't give a shit. It looks fine. It looks how it probably... It, lo it looks realistic, so I like it. It's got decent action. Doctor Doom isn't very good, but that's only because his comic counterpart is so good. Like, Doctor Doom has never been done perfectly because... He's never been done good, really, actually. Because his comic book version is just such a good character that it's so hard for these people to get it done right. I think MCU will do it justice. I do think they will. But this... It wasn't the best. I, but I still enjoyed it for what it was, though. Like, I, I just looking at his different character, just looking at it as its own thing, I don't mind him. I think he looks decent. The actor portrays it decently. It's whatever. It's fine. It's really not a bad movie. I, I think people shit on it a little too much. So, uh, the, the sequel, the Silver Surfer one, I don't like it as much, but I'm going to put it still in... Nah, I'm going to put an average, top of average. It's, it's definitely weaker. I think it kind of drags a bit, especially the ending was just kind of iffy. Uh, Silver Surfer was fine in terms of like the the look and some of the scenes they did with him were really awesome. But Jennifer Lawrence as Sue. You think they should do that for the future or for the for the MCU? I don't know about that. Maybe that could work. Yeah, Galactus was awful. I think everyone agrees on that. Galactus was kind of awful. I mean, again, I think MCU will do that justice, but I don't know what they were doing with that here. <laughs> there is just some weird stuff in the sequel, but I still thought it was fine for the most part. It, it was entertaining, and that's enough for me to be invested in it. I definitely liked it more than everything below here, so... We're not convincing as siblings. I think they were convincing. Maybe not in terms of looks, but at least in terms of like how they acted. That was fine. <clears throat> I actually heard they've already casted someone for the Fantastic Four movie. So I think someone's going to show up in um, Doctor Strange 2 probably. At least, I don't know who, but someone. Whoever is going to be casted for that movie. Which I don't know when it's supposed to come out, but whatever. Now we got Fantastic Four from 2015. Um, top of bad. And, and yeah, top of bad. I think I like it. No, less than Hulk, but still there. This movie, honestly, I enjoyed the first act. I think the first act is not bad at all. I think the first act is actually decent. It's 
it's once you hit the time jump where everything goes to shit. Like, I thought it built up nicely. I thought the actors are mostly fine in their roles. I thought the story and how it built up to why they were going to this place and all that. I thought Doctor Doom was awful in this one. Way worse than he was in any other ones. But I really liked the first act. It was just the, the fact that they did a time jump. They skip a whole second act, essentially. Like, there's a whole second act to this movie that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. They just, they skip, they, they do the build up in the setup, they get their powers, and then boom, they're in the final battle. It's like, what the fuck? You don't even know why. Like, why are we already here? We haven't even gotten and established the characters and their motivations. No, 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 nothing's established. They just threw us into the final action scene. It's like, what? No, Doctor Strange comes out in um, May now. It got delayed two months. He could be cast as a superhero, not no hero in mind. Would you go for Marvel or DC? I don't. I wouldn't have a preference. Whichever one pays me more money. <laughs> no, honestly, just whichever one offers a better role, I guess. And I, I wouldn't have a preference really. I don't have a preference between Marvel or DC for like as a fan at all. Like I honestly watch these movies, and I would never preferred. That's a lie. I have preferred Marvel over DC at some points, but after watching all the DC movies, because I haven't seen a lot of them before when I preferenced Marvel, but now after I've seen like all a bunch of them, I definitely it's pretty equal for me. I can't really choose between the two. Yeah, it makes no sense. It's just out of nowhere we're in the final battle. It's just like the fuck happened to the second act. I mean, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff about this movie that shit just did not go well. So. It makes sense sense why it all went the way it did. I thought it had a good build up. I thought the first act was fine. I honestly don't mind that the actors are much younger. I think they did that because they assumed they were going to play it for longer, so they were like, "Oh, we'll you know have them on for longer so they can be younger." And I, it just it was just weird. I don't know. Even the it had decent production value, but a lot of the special effects for 2015 wasn't even that good. I mean, comparing it to like Avengers. Um, Age of Ultron that came out at the time it, not even close to that type of stuff Doctor Doom should get his own movie oh he should if any villain in the MCU is going to get his own movie it should be Doctor Doom I agree MCU hasn't done villain movies yet right yeah no they haven't I mean we got the Sony villain movies but MCU hasn't done that yet I would be interested to see that though Oh, I'm very excited for the Flash movie, yeah. It's probably within my top three most anticipated of next year. Mainly for the Batman stuff. Like, I, li I like the Flash, he's cool and all, but, like, I'm more excited to see Affleck and Keaton. So. Alright. Now we got Ghost Rider. I'll kind of do these quickly, because I don't really care that much about these movies. They're just kind of okay to me. At least the first one, I think, is just average. I'm gonna... I'll throw it like, I think it's better than Batman Forever, so. Yeah, it's average. It's, I love Nicolas Cage, especially in this movie, honestly. I think he actually does a great job as Ghost Rider. Like, I know he's much older now, but I honestly wouldn't mind to see him back as Ghost Rider if they bring him to the MCU. I'm sure they would just recast it, but I, I think Nicolas Cage just did a great job in the role. Alla Watch, thank you for another $5, man. You've been killing it with those donations. I do. I love DC. I grew up with DC, but Marvel's X-Men and Daredevil, because of the Netflix show, have a special place in my heart. I love Bullseye. Yeah, no, I, I, can, I just can't pick a preference. I don't know. I just don't have it. I feel like I get a lot of different storytellings out of both, both of them. I don't know, like... DC has a lot more of the serious and gritty stuff that I really like, but Marvel also has a lot more of the fun and crazy and still really well-told stories as well. But also, Marvel can be serious when they want to. Even if you're just talking outside of the MCU, I mean, Logan's one of the ser most serious, gritty movies out there. And even in the MCU, like, yeah, all the movies have a lot of humor, but there's also very serious moments in a lot of the movies that are intertwined in there.
Norman Reedus for MCU Ghost Rider. I wouldn't mind that, honestly. Uh, Ghost Rider, where'd I put it? Yeah, right here. So yeah, this one, I love the look of Ghost Rider. I love the music in this movie too. It's got like that rock music and sh that plays throughout a lot of it. The villain sucks ass though, so that doesn't really help it at all. I just like seeing Ghost Rider like just using his the chain thing. It's it's fun. That That's the only part of this movie I like. Other than that, it's kind of average. It's so weird. I'm putting it bad. I'm sorry. It's such a weirdly directed movie. I don't know what they were thinking for half of the shit they do in this. It's just so... Idris Elba's in it. And he's not even good. Like, I love Idris Elba, but for some reason he just... He just he felt like he was honing it in. But I, I think that was just... The dialogue was awful. They didn't give him much to work with, to be honest. And this movie's off the chain wild, but, like, not in a good way. And it's also kind of boring. Like, a lot of it's boring, too. So that doesn't help. Never found the sequel all that interesting. I can't really uh can't really say it's a good movie. I can't say it's even better than bad, so it's it's going down there. Unfortunately. This is pretty even so far. Like I feel like I'm not I'm not like putting certain movies in certain categories more than others. It's pretty even between all of them, so I like that. I like that a lot. Alright, we're gonna I'm just gonna go to the bathroom real quick just so also, I can get some more water too because I'm out of my water. And <laughs> when you're when you're live streaming, I don't know if you if any of you guys live stream or like do things where you have to talk consistently. Your voice is just gone by the end of it, man. It's so rough. Two hours of talking straight is just is not good for you. <laughs> it starts to hurt, but that's why I drink a lot of water, so it kind of fixes that issue. But then that means a lot of peeing and a lot of trying to get more water because you can only hold so much water. So I'll be right back. Literally will be like a minute or two maybe at most. <clears throat> Look at all that shit. Mm. That is good. Can you do ASMR? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. <clears throat> DC is night, Marvel is day. Oh. Okay. So now we just got X Men, Spider Man, and MCU. And then we're done. And then we're done. That's all we got. That's all we got. And I would say. Oh, shit. Fuck. I'm sorry. I, I loved. 
there's a lot in here that I love. Like, there's some really good stuff here. So, there's going to be some unpopular opinions, though, I already know, especially for X Men. There's a lot of unpopular X Men opinions I think I have. Starting off with X Men, the first one. I'm going to put this. Top of good? No. It's in good. I don't think it's great. But it's in good. Yo, my dog is such an asshole. So you know what my dog does? He's sitting outside because I have a cat too, right? And the cat's in another room. And that my dog harasses the shit out of his cat. Like the cat's are trying to mind his own business and the dog's like trying to get in there doesn't leave the cat alone. I'm like, dude, you gotta leave that damn cat alone. He's just trying to enjoy his, his alone time. He doesn't want to hang out with you. And the dog's like, nah. He's being an asshole. I don't know. We got 48 left. Holy shit. <laughs> That's a lot. So all this thing. So yeah, X-Men. I'm gonna put a below, below Blade, actually. Yeah, I'll put it behind Blade. Maybe even behind Superman 2. Nah, it's, it's above that. Okay, so yeah, X-Men's solid. It's a solid start to this franchise. I just... I don't think it does as much good stuff as some of the other ones do. You know what I mean? I, I Honestly, I love the X-Men movies. I, I really do. Like, I... I'm glad I watched them. That's... That's something I gotta say. I'm glad you guys recommended them. I mean, I was gonna watch them anyways at some point, but I'm glad I saved it for the channel because it was kind of fun watching them on the channel. Um, but I definitely enjoyed X2 more. I think a lot of people would probably say X2 is one of the better ones, but I don't think it's like necessarily top of the list good. But it's definitely great. It's definitely gonna go in great. I just don't know where in great. I'm going to say above, no, below Blade. No, above Blade 2. X2 was a solid step up, I would say. It was a solid sequel. It kind of just built on a lot of what the first one did. And had some different storyline directions. Like, they were working with Magneto for most of it until the very end, of course. But for most of it, they were working with him because they needed his help against Stryker. And I liked that whole storyline. I liked... What they did with Wolverine here, they started focusing more on his backstory, and that was really well done. I like how they ended it with Gene. I, I liked it. I liked it. All these characters get better in two. Exactly, yeah. Like they, they were fine in the first one, but I think they just do even better in the second one, and they just build upon them a lot better. There's a lot more to do for every character, essentially. So, Are they essential watch before watching Deadpool? Deadpool, no, they're, Deadpool feels very much its own thing. They're not very connected. They have some X Men characters show up, but they're not necessary to watch Deadpool. I'd still, I'd still watch them just because I think they're good movies, but I don't think it's necessary. I think if you're a fan of the MCU, you should watch X Men movies now because I've already been hearing of a lot of rumors of some X Men things coming soon. So I would just, just to get yourself acquainted with it, I personally would, but. It's up to you. But for Deadpool, I don't think they're necessary, really. Now, this is my biggest unpopular opinion. I'm sure you guys, if you've seen, seen the videos, you know what I'm about to do <laughs> with X-Men The Last Stand. I like this a lot more than pretty much everyone else seems to have. So much so that I'm going to put it... Literally right ab above X2. I don't think it's that much higher than X2, but it's higher. It's higher. That That's where I think I'm going to lose people. That's where I think people are going to be like, nah, bro, you crazy. But I really liked it. I really liked it. I think it's a great movie. I think the only issue I have with it, maybe the whole thing with Scott. Like, I don't know. They kind of killed him off in a weird way. Like off screen, kind of, but. I think that was because the actor had to leave or something, but like, okay, you could have still given him a decent death, though, you know? And I never had an issue with the Dark Phoenix storyline in this one. 
I thought the Dark Phoenix storyline was perfectly fine. I thought it was perfectly uh, okay the way it was. They had the whole Cure storyline, which I thought was interesting, and it provided a moral dilemma for the characters that I thought was good. I didn't see any issue with it. People were saying it was overstuffed. There was too much going on. I don't, I don't really think there was. I thought it was completely fine. And Magneto was just as good as he was in the other ones. I would say he was even better in this one. He had cooler scenes. He had the one scene where he literally lifted the goddamn Golden Gate Bridge. He also had the one scene where he was destroying those cop cars, which was really fun. I also loved the um the whole ending battle at Alcatraz was great. It was a great location for the ending battle as well. We just say the Green Goblin's Spider-Man's Joker. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Are you gonna rate Venom? Yeah, we'll get to it. We'll, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. Real soon. We're almost there. But yeah, no, X-Men Last Stand I think is very underrated. So, it's getting it's getting the great rating for me. X-Men Origins Wolverine. I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say average. I don't think it's bad. Not even meh. It's just average. Below Birds of Prey. I'm going to put it right there. It's above Punisher Warzone, below Birds of Prey. This movie, it, it, it's not... If you separate it from the rest of the movies, I think it's much better, just on its own. But even then, it's not like... It's not the most compelling origin story for him, to be honest. But it's still Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. He's still a lot of fun to watch in this role. I don't mind some of the other things they do. I know people hated what they did with Deadpool in it, but it's like, it's just, it's random. It doesn't really matter to me because they eventually did Deadpool good with the Deadpool movie. So it's like, okay, whatever. We have one weird version of Deadpool here. I'll deal with it for now because I know there's Deadpool movie out there anyways. But I'm sure back in 2009, it was much worse for people who wanted to see an accurate Deadpool and they saw this shit and they're like, what the hell? But for what it was, I didn't really care. Sabretooth as a villain, his, his brother, I mean, it could have been better, you know? No, I haven't seen Swamp Thing. I haven't. Personally, wasn't familiar with the Dark Phoenix story, which is why I didn't hate it as much. Agreed. I, I think the problem is, and there, I, I do this sometimes too. I do this especially with The Walking Dead because The Walking Dead has source material of the comics. And I don't think it's always a good idea to rate the movies based on whether or not it's accurate to the comics. I tend to just rate it based on is it good or bad, right? Do I think do I think it's good or bad? Now that could sometimes mean, you know, the comics that are really good and then the thing that are really bad. But a lot of the time, people just simply don't like it because it's different. And I don't I don't think that's usually fair. I think sometimes it can be different but still good. Perfect example. Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is nothing like comic Joker. It's He's really nothing like him. At least in this stage in his, in his Joker form. But I think it's perfectly done the way it is, you know? So I think there's a time and place for it. I also really like the whole Kayla thing that did in X-Men Origins Wolverine. That's one of my things, one thing to think about. I actually liked the Kayla thing. Uh, the, the twist with it as well. And I thought it played out nicely. So, I don't know. It wasn't an awful movie. It's just average to me. I think X-Men's going to cross over with MCU. I think, uh, well, I think they're going to recast most of it. I think they're going to do like a reboot for it. But I, I do think they'll do an actual straight up crossover with the X-Men universe in Doctor Strange 2. That's not a spoiler. I'm just speculating. I There, there has been rumors, but I they're not like leaks or anything. They're just rumors and stuff. I think it'll happen. I don't know who, but I'm hoping it happens. Personally, I hope it's Magneto. I hope it's... um. Michael Fassbender, Magneto. I would love to see that. I don't really... Uh, uh, people want to be Hugh Jackman, but I kind of feel like his send-off was so good. I don't really think we need any more of him. I would love to see Daphne Keene, though, as X-23. Oh, my God. If we saw her come back, I'd freak out. That'd be awesome. That'd be fucking awesome. She has to. That'd be that'd be the way to do it to me. Like, you, you, can't, you can't get a better Wolverine than Hugh Jackman, so... Give us a female Wolverine then. I don't know. Why not? I'm sure she's like, what, like 16 now or something? Just have her come in and just be a badass little girl kicking ass just like she was in Logan. I don't know. 
That'd be fun. I think they could recast. They want to call it recasting. It's just casting a new Wolverine for MCU because it'd be a new version of him. But I just don't. I just don't think they should. I don't think they need to. And to my knowledge, he's not even that important of an X Men character. Like I've heard a lot of people say, their biggest disappointment with the X Men movies is that Wolverine was such a focus. When in reality, he's not like a main X Men character. He's kind of usually not like he, he's a fan favorite sure but the other characters tend to get more spotlight in the comics at least at least that's what people told me i don't know how true that is so i don't think they need him to be honest if they're gonna bring him in give us if they're gonna bring in a wolverine like person just give us x23 it'd be great if it was daphne keen too because she was awesome where would you rank howard the duck well it's not on the list therefore I wouldn't rank it because I haven't seen it. I would I would put it on the list if I've seen it. I just haven't seen it. Can we talk No Way Home spoilers in the chat? Not until we get to it. When we get to the movie, which we're going to get to it last, then we'll talk about that. But for now, I would prefer you people didn't just because... I prefer you guys didn't just because, like... Uh, there probably is some people who hasn't seen it yet in the chat, and I don't want people to be like, oh, I can't look at the chat because I haven't seen it. So I just... I just prefer if people didn't, but I would still be cautious if you haven't seen it yet because there will be somebody who will say something just because they don't realize that we probably shouldn't. I, I mean, the movie's been out for like almost a week now, so to be fair, if you haven't seen it yet, go see it. What are you doing? But because <laughs> um, even like Marvel themselves already posted spoilers on their own Marvel page, so I, I think it's to the point where we could probably talk about it, but just to be safe, we'll, we'll wait till we get there. Just to be safe. Oh, we're gonna be getting Deadpool in the MCU real soon. All right, all right. X Men First Class. We gotta talk, we gotta we gotta move on. Definitely S. Definitely S. We haven't had an S in a while. Holy shit! The last S tier movie we had was Kick Ass, right? Yeah, the last S tier was Kick Ass. It took us a long time to get another S tier, but definitely First Class is deserving of S. Um, wearing S though. I think right here is good this was such a surprise to me because I, I just i don't know i was expecting to like it but i didn't know i was gonna like it that much the same director as kick-ass actually and shit it's good so good um especially james mcavoy as xavier and michael fassbender as uh, magneto and even jennifer lawrence as mystique was great I love the shit out of her. I love all, all three of them were great in this movie. Even the other characters were fine and enjoyable. It obviously focused very heavily on the the conflict between Xavier and Eric and their differences. And I thought it handled all of that very damn well. I thought it was a very beautifully directed movie. Especially with a lot of the stuff they did with Magneto. One of my favorite scenes is that scene in the, the bar where Magneto stabs the one dude and he like takes the knife and like lets it fly into the other dude. It, like, that, that was cool. That's some cool shit. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds plus Tom Hall. Oh yeah, Deadpool and Spider-Man, they gotta do a duo. That'd be cool. I want to see No Way Home on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Planning on going again this weekend. Damn. I've, I've already seen it twice actually. I'm probably not going to see it a third time, but I wouldn't mind seeing the third time. I just don't plan on it right now. Yeah, no, First Class is solid. Solid villain, too. Kevin Bacon did a great job with that. It's probably... It's one of my favorite X-Men movies. It's not my favorite, though, but it's one of my favorites. Can you make a poll Jennifer or Rebecca? <laughs> Why? Thank you for the $2. Owl watch. I don't. I don't. You really. You guys really want that poll? I don't even know. I don't even know if I can make polls. I know you. Can, I know how to do that on. Oh, I. I see. Hold on. Is, is anyone give a shit? <laughs> do you want? Do you want me to make this poll? No. I. 
I feel like most people would probably say Jennifer Lawrence just because although Mystique in the first three, like she was great, but like she didn't have much to do. She had a lot more to do. She had a lot more to, she obviously actually like spoke in the other one. So I feel like Jennifer Lawrence is just more known as Mystique for that. No, No Way Home's not on any streaming services. Not right now. It might be eventually, but we'll see. It might be eventually. All right, well, I'll make a quick little pull then. All right, fine, fine. I'll, I'll do it for y'all. I'll do it for y'all. I won't even I won't even weigh in. I don't want to make the, the the things uh wait, where do you see it? Did it does it pop up for you guys? Oh, there we go. I see it. How does this work? I've literally never done a poll before, so I don't even know how this works. Oh yeah, no, the, the fight scenes with Mystique in the first three were great. I, w I would agree with that. I think Jennifer's fight scenes in, in Days of Future Past were really solid, though. Because she was brutal in that one. She was out for blood in that one, man. But she had a lot of good fight scenes, and especially X2. I don't know. I, I can't really, like, I, they're, they're, they're very similar. They they get the job done in different ways. All right, the Wolverine. Let's move on. Aquaman is not S tier. My list, my list. To me, it is. To me, it is. It's fucking. It's a, it's a masterpiece to me. <laughs> Rebecca's eye candy. We never really get to see her out of the Mystique form, though, except for like once or twice. Would you favorite DC and MCU movie? You'll find out by the end of the list, because this is all in order. So, I mean, I've I've already said though, Joker is my favorite movie of all time. So I think you could just <laughs> you'll know right then and there that, that this is my favorite DC movie for sure. But Marvel, you'll, you'll find out. You'll find out because we're already done with the DC movies. So this is this is how DC's looking right here. If you want to just see my favorite DC movies, my top fives right here, Joker, Dark Knight, Justice League, uh, Dark Knight Rises, and Wonder Woman. That's my top five. All right, I'm in the poll now. You guys had enough votes. <laughs> All right, The Wolverine. The Wolverine. I think is a good movie, but it's it's not high, much higher than that, though. It's It's above The Punisher. Above Wonder Woman 84, above Superman Returns. But that's it. That's as high as it's getting. To me. I think this movie had some of the coolest locations going to, uh, to Tokyo for a lot of it. Like, that was awesome. Are you more of a Marvel or DC guy? I talked about this a little bit before. I don't have a preference. Like, I'm pretty much equal for both. If it was a couple years ago, I'd probably say Marvel, but especially after Joker. And some of like the recent DCEU stuff, I I think I'm pretty much equal. Um, I can't really pick or choose to be honest. I think they're both equally as good. Even when it comes to like the outside the movie stuff and looking at like the games and stuff, and I'm pretty much equal. I think they both have equally quality stuff. I guess I can't choose. It depends on the day. Some days I'm like, oh, I'm all DC right now, and then one the next day I'm all Marvel. It, Depends how I'm feeling, but it's pretty much equal for me. And you could probably tell by this list when we finish all the Marvel, you'll be able to tell it's pretty equal. There's going to be probably an equal amount of Marvel and DC movies in S. And even though there's a lot less DC movies on this list, though, so keep that in mind. <coughs> all right. Well, Wolverine, I loved Hugh Jackman in this one. I thought he did. I mean, he's, I love him in all of them, but he especially did really good in this one. He looked really good in this one, too, in terms of, like, his, his build and stuff. And 
I love the story with this whole Japan villain. I thought the ending was a little iffy, though, to be honest. The ending was the only thing that I, I just I, I, I just can't say I found all of that interesting with the big ass robot dude and shit. Don't tell me to hurry up. I'll take as long as I want. Just because you said that, I'm going to take extra long now. <laughs> oh my god. Your favorite superhero? Um, well, I don't I don't think that would narrow down the side. I'm pretty much between Spider-Man and Batman on that. I I definitely would say I prefer Spider-Man, but Batman's like a close second, so uh, it's hard to say. Joker was kind of sad. That's why I love it. That's why I love it. Yeah, the Joker, uh, Wolverine's definitely underrated. I agree. I think I think Good's a good spot for it, though. I don't think it's much better than that, mainly because I don't think the third act landed perfectly. But everything else was great. Everything else was great. Had some good Wolverine action, as always, you know. Kind of what you expect to get in a Wolverine movie. Um, but then came Days of Future Past, which was even better. Um, I don't think I'd put this like high high, but I'm 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 giving it at least above first class for sure. MKF thirty, thank you for the two dollars. Which is more depressing, you think, Joker or Logan? I'm more connected to Lo uh, Logan, so. It was more sad to me because Joker's more depressing, but Logan's more sad. You know that you know what I mean? Like, does that make any sense? Like Joker's more depressing because it's it's real life issues. You know what I mean? Like that's a real life shit that goes down that this this see people like this happens. But Logan's more like, oh, this is a character we know and love for so long and we're seeing him deteriorating and finally finding someone he loves and cares about and is able to like have a f sense of family that's like blood related family essentially a little more dna related whatever you want to call it and losing that at the end like that that is sadder to me it, you know something that make me cry but i think joker's more depressing i guess i don't know depends how you word it But, you know, Days of Future Past is definitely yes, no doubt about it. This movie was so interesting with what it did. It's a very interesting. It's you know time travel. You know I I do think that's the one iffy thing I have is like I know Kitty Pride. I'm sure she um she could probably do it in the comics. I don't know, but it was kind of it felt out of nowhere to me. It's like why why didn't we know about this before? But whatever. But I don't give a shit. It was so much fun seeing Wolverine go to the 70s and having to try to confront uh, Charles and deal with this whole situation i love james mcavoy in this movie i mean i feel like first class was magneto's movie but this was professor x's movie this was professor x's movie this is where he was just all in because he was just down bad in this movie but then um what's it called it kind of changes when especially when he gets to speak to his older self which was one of the best scenes of the movie for sure I think Mystique's character was at her peak in this movie, for me, at least. Uh, both versions of Magneto were great. You know, Ian McKellen and Michael Fassbender did great as their respective roles. I mean, a lot of people die in this one, but then end up not really dying in the end because, you know, they kind of reset the timeline, which I thought was a really interesting ending, a really interesting way to take the story that I did not expect at all. Yeah, I love this movie. It, it felt like... A return to form in terms of like the first three it felt very similar to the first three but it still had that first class flavor to it so mcu wolverine fan cast uh, we talked about this a little bit before i prefer that they just don't do another wolverine to be honest i, I would rather see um daphne keen come back I, I wouldn't mind like a cameo maybe now i just feel like logan was such a good send-off i don't really want to see it again i wouldn't mind if, if he does come back if it's hugh jackman or someone else like i wouldn't mind it but i prefer just leave him be and have daphne keen from logan come in somehow and have x23 you know there's a lot of x23 comics i've 
not really read them, but I've looked into it, and they're pretty. They're pretty damn cool. Like I don't know, she looks pretty badass in some of these. You know, obviously don't make it as promiscuous because she's like 16, but you know, you could do some cool shit with this. I don't know. I mean, you could also you could also recast her. I guess it doesn't have to be Daphne Keen. You could recast someone older and have her look like this, but I I, I would prefer that to be honest because you can't really re, you can't get a better Hugh Jackman. So if you want to bring in a Wolverine character, you might as well do X23 to me. That's just my opinion. The fuck is this? This is a Venom X23. <laughs> the symbiote goes into fucking. That's kind of cool. I love uh like fan art like that. Unless that's actually from a comic. I don't think it is. I think this is fan art. I don't know. The fuck is happening here? I don't know. Oh, that's pretty cool. It'd be even cooler if she got the same suit too. That'd be awesome. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. You should make another tear called oh tear called perfect because if Joker is your favorite movie of all time, how is it near perfect? Because I personally don't think anything is perfect. Even though I don't really have any flaws for the movie, if I still look at the movie, like I could still say, okay, if they spent a little bit more time on this, maybe they could have made it better. You know what I mean? Like, I think everything could be improved. Nothing is perfect. Nothing. Not any person, not anything, not any creation. Nothing. I feel the same way about movies. It's hard for me to say it's perfect because it's not. You could make this better if you really tried. You could. You could. I don't know. There's a couple scenes maybe that have some better way to shoot it. I don't know. There's always a way to improve things in my opinion. So that's why I don't call it perfect. It's as close as perfect as it's going to get to me though. I don't think it's necessary to change anything because I do think it's close enough to the point where it's a, you know, solid movie. Fan cast me as Wolverine. Do I look anything like that, man? I'm tall and lanky. That That's not Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. The symbiote does attach to a lot of people in the comics. In MCU, I feel like it would probably just go to Tom Holland. I originally thought they would give us Venom in the MCU, but now I'm starting to think they're going to do Venom somewhere else. We'll talk about that later. I don't want to go with the No Way Home spoilers, but we'll talk about that some later. There's rumors of a Joker too. I hope it happens. I've seen a lot of people say they don't want it to because they thought it was really good standalone, which I agree, it's a solid standalone movie, but I think a sequel could work. It, this was his origin to becoming the Joker. Right? Why not let us see the origin of him becoming this massive, like, influence on Gotham? That's what I want to see. I'm about 6'2", six, six I think. Something like that. I don't really measure myself, but I think I'm like 6'2 or 6'1. But, like, that would be cool, Joker 2. See his rise to power in Gotham. Because we, we saw, like, his rise to, like, short-term power, but we didn't get to see that extend you know, for a long period of time. So I would have loved to see Joker too, pretty much. I, I would love it. That's all I got to say. All right, X-Men Apocalypse. Um, such an underrated movie. Such an underrated fucking movie. Um, But it's not that high. It's like, it's above Shazam though. I'm sure it's unpopular. I know it's unpopular, but I still loved it. Only thing I could say I didn't like, yes, it does feel a bit repetitive making Magneto go down the same path that he just went down in the last one, kind of, but in a different way. It does feel repetitive, but I still loved how it played out. I don't also think Apocalypse is that good of a villain, but he's not terrible. He's just enjoyable enough. But everything else surrounding this movie, I like the new addition to the cast. I think James McAvoy is still doing a great job as Professor X. I thought Mystique was still fine in this one. I thought Quicksilver was a fun part when they added him in that little scene as well that scene with logan is so damn good that's one of my favorite scenes with logan and outside of his you know outside of logan itself but one of my favorite logan scenes in the franchise loved it 
if you don't want a joke or two, just don't watch it. Exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, I don't understand why people let sequels ruin their movies. Like, I always hear that. They're like, oh, the sequel trilogy of Star Wars ruined the original trilogy. Like, why? Just forget the sequels exist. If you hate the sequels, just forget they exist and just watch the original trilogy. It doesn't, it doesn't have to ruin your enjoyment of the other movies just because you didn't like it. You know what I mean? Same way for this. If you just don't want a second one, just forget it exists and just watch the first one and pretend it doesn't. Unless the second one's taking away from the studio doing something else, maybe. But it's probably not. It's probably going to be Todd Phillips again directing. It's probably going to be same shit. I don't know. I just I want to see it. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't really care if, if it's taking time away from other DC movies that they could be doing because... They did a fantastic job with the first one. There's no reason why I don't think they wouldn't do a fantastic job with the second one, too. I don't really feel like making another tier because then it's just going to make things all weird. But I, I, I do agree, though. Joker is, is, is fantastic. Deadpool. Deadpool. Deadpool's going to get... It's, it's just going to miss the S tier for me. It's just gonna miss it and it's gonna get a it's so close to s tier I, I i love deadpool i have a lot of fun with this movie it's it's just it's just fun it's funny it's probably one of the funniest here it's actually kind of funny how the suicide squad and deadpool which i think are the two funniest movies on this entire list are next to each other coincidence but i, I don't know they're funny but they don't have it doesn't have that much depth though but beyond that it's just funny and entertaining. I still wish that the Joker was in the same universe as... I, <laughs> we're still on the Joker topic. I, I do wish it was in the same universe as the new Batman movie, but it's not. I don't think it is. But, oh well. A man can wish. I, I guess it's fine being its own thing and just not having really... Not showing Batman. You know? I didn't film reactions to Deadpool. A lot of people, are, some people are questioning it. I've already seen them a while ago, that's why. And I've seen them a couple times, so I had no reason to rewatch them or anything. The sequel, though, I thought was kind of underwhelming. But not bad, it's just underwhelming. It's still gonna be bottom of good. So, first one's top of grape, second one's bottom of good. I don't know. I thought Cable was cool. You know, they had some funny jokes, but I thought the humor definitely wasn't as good as the first one. And also, I just didn't, I didn't have much, as much fun with it. I don't know. Maybe I'm in the minority there. I also haven't watched it in a while. I, last time I watched it was like 2018. So I don't know. Yeah, I think all those three Jokers are great. It's hard to like say which one's better. They all do good in their own roles, you know? I mean, I think the best part about these movies is obviously Ryan Reynolds. He is Deadpool. Like, it, I, I know a lot of people like to, like, you know, <clears throat> like, like, try to think of what is the one actor that is, like, a character and no one else could play that character and it just wouldn't make sense for anyone else to do it you could make an argument for a lot of people but i think at the end of the day the number one choice for me is probably ryan reynolds deadpool like, i just i don't know he fits it so freaking perfectly i just don't really know if i could see anyone else doing it i feel the same way about hugh jackman as, as wolverine but like at the same time i mean i could see someone doing it i could i just for this i physically can't where's no way home uh, it's down here. We haven't talked about it yet. <clears throat> wasn't Bruce Wayne a kid in Joker? How would old, how would Joker be in later movies if he was the same universe? Well, Joker wasn't that old either. I mean, I know Phoenix is. I don't know how old Phoenix is, but I know you could play him off as being like thirty-five in that movie, probably late thirty, maybe forty something. I don't know if they actually say his age in that movie. Do they say his age? Because his mother was only like what, like sixty something. So I'm sure he's like 40. So think about it. They do a time jump of 10 years. And Batman was... Or Bruce was like 12. 14, 15. I don't know how old he was in um, The Joker. But 
he time jumped like 10 years and now he's like in his 20s 25 i'm pretty sure the batman is supposed to be a younger batman anyways so i, I think it could work and just do a time jump i mean joker could be in his 50s and i don't think that would be a problem to me All right, now we got to talk about this uh, this this little masterpiece right here. Oh, we did Deadpool two for we're supposed to do Logan and then Deadpool two. I guess I just wanted to do them next to each other, but this one came out first. But Logan's up here. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. It's it. I would say it's better than the Dark Knight. I don't think it's better than Joker though, but I li I like it more than the Dark Knight. I think this is one of the best stories one of the best i love the action too like the like, like just looking just even though the action is like not the most important part of this movie just looking at it from an action standpoint that nice r-rated brutal action getting to see you know hugh jackman just go off with those damn claws and just stabbing up people all over the place daphne keen kicking ass too is awesome Love every second of those action scenes, right? And then all, especially the scene against X-24. Oh my god, that's great. But the story itself is just so... It's one of my favorite types of stories. I love those stories where it's like this father who does not want to take care of his daughter. He just does not give a shit about her at first because he doesn't know her. Like, maybe he just finds out he, that it's his daughter out of nowhere. Or maybe he just... Maybe it's not even his daughter at all and it's just some random girl. I don't know. But I love the type of stories where you have that person who eventually grows to care about that person eventually as the movie goes along and then you know they have, so someone ends up dying or something and then it's actually really impactful for that and this movie does that very damn well very damn well you haven't really done much as far as christmas well i'm about to i just haven't yet i'm only doing one uh I have krampus is gonna probably drop like next week or probably on actually no i'll probably drop it like a couple days actually There's not that many popular Christmas movies that I haven't seen. That's kind of why. I don't want to force myself to watch unpopular movies that nobody gives a shit about, you know? I've pretty much seen all the big Christmas movies, so I kind of found it hard. I'm not going to... Again, if no one wants to see it, I'm just not going to force myself to watch it. Yeah, it's impossible. It, Logan, Logan's a masterpiece. It I... Again, I, I still would say it's just near perfect. I don't call anything perfect, but it's as close as it's going to get. It's a 9.999 out of 10 to me. <clears throat> Fucking fantastic. Okay. Then we get to dark... F Actually, I want to talk about this a little bit more. I, I need to say, I just... The performances all around are fantastic, too. Even Daphne Keen, like, just such a good performance. I mean, I cried at the ending. I think most people did. The soundtrack, Marco Beltrami's uh, soundtrack's phenomenal, too. I mean, I, I could say that about, like, all these movies. Like, most of these movies have some really good music. So, I don't know. But like, this one especially, just the way it plays with the movie. It's a, it's a very Western-feeling movie. It's such a different movie. Too. It's just a different-feeling movie. It's a dark, gritty movie. I want more of that from superhero movies. I, I do. I, I think they don't do that enough, to be honest. And I think when they do, it's usually really solid. <clears throat> yeah, Patrick Stewart's great in it as well. Good shit. X-Men Dark Phoenix. Um, Bottom of average. I don't think it's D-worthy. But it's pretty rough. What's separating Joker from Logan? I, I think the the aspects of mental health that are focused on in Joker separated a little bit from Logan. Just for me. I mean, this is a opinionated list, obviously. This is, you know, subjective. But that's just how I see it. But they're very close. I don't think this is that much better than Logan. I just, just by a little bit. You like Apocalypse 2? Oh, yeah. I was definitely not against it as much as other people were. 
You got to meet Hugh Jackman? Damn. I was the biggest Spider-Man fan as a kid. Toby Spider, for some reason I stopped watching them until this past June when I binged all the MCU movies. I've always been a pretty... I, I, it took me actually a while to get to the MCU. Um, I, it wasn't until like 2016, I think. Since I started watching those. I was kind of before. I was. I only really cared about Spider-Man and some Batman stuff. Not all of it. And like Fantastic Four, and that was it. And then I started getting to MCU, and then I just... And then after that, everything kind of just fell into place. Which superhero villain movie would you like to see rated R? Like one that already exists, or like a new one that should be R? Because if you're talking about ones that already exist that should have been R, 100% Venom, let there be carnage. And even the first Venom, they just should have been R right off the get-go. The fact that they weren't, this was a big missed opportunity. Oh yeah, movie 43 you're thinking of, not 48. I remember that movie. That was hilarious. I forgot that was Hugh Jackman too. I totally forgot that he was even in that in that scene, but that was funny. But yeah, Dark Phoenix, that's what we were on. This movie, it was a fun movie. I was entertained, but I thought the story was really weak and I did not really like a lot of the like the shit that was happening in it to be honest. I feel like a lot of the character motivations and decisions felt out of place. Magneto felt like he was going down a path that he's been down 30,000 times. I didn't like Charles in this movie. He felt like kind of a dick for a lot of it. And then at the same time, I was like, no, I kind of agree with him. But then I was like, wait, what is he doing? And then he just acted out of place and everyone hated on him for the whole movie. It felt like weird. And then they kill off Mystique in the weirdest way. Only because Jennifer Lawrence didn't really want to do it anymore, apparently. It felt like a rushed movie. It was kind of short. The story felt all over the place. The soundtrack is fantastic, though. It's such a good soundtrack. That's what's keeping out of D for me. Hans Zimmer knows how to make a damn good soundtrack. New R-rated movie? All right, how about this? Uh, a Carnage movie. <laughs> literally just Maximum Carnage. I would love that. Just call it Maximum Carnage. And just have it be literally a... Make it a slasher film. Make it a slasher film with Carnage just going around killing people. I would I would watch that all day. I really would. Deadpool endorses cancer. What? <clears throat> I honestly don't blame her because the the the, the X Men franchise at this point. I don't know. I thought this was the only one that I I didn't like at this like at this point. Like this is the only time where I started to feel like all these movies are getting a little iffy. Before this, I liked pretty much everything to a degree. Even X Men Origins, I liked a lot more. I don't know. But then we get to the New Mutants. I have not posted this reaction yet, but I did watch it, and I don't really know how I feel about it. So I'm just gonna leave it right here. Right next to Dark Phoenix and bottom of average. I don't think it was bad, but I also don't really think I enjoyed it that much, to be honest. I thought it was just okay. I don't know. It was just there. It just it existed to me. I don't know. I watched it the whole time and I felt nothing. I felt nothing watching this movie. I had a fun time because I was react reacting to it. So I was, you know, making jokes and stuff and just, you know, trying to put on a decent, entertaining watch for you guys who watched the reaction but i didn't feel anything watching the movie it didn't feel like a impactful story to me and it doesn't help that the story felt kind of rushed it was really short it was like an hour and 30 minutes one of the shortest superhero movies i've ever seen it was like an hour 20 actually i was really short that's just that's that's which isn't usually a good idea for these type of movies because there's usually a lot of story that they need to cover and they just did not cover it very well Eddie faced off against Carnage as a pink Jack the Ripper. <laughs> okay, we're finally done with X-Men. Now we can do Spidey, which I've literally just ranked recently, and I talk about these. I've talked about these so much this past weekend because of that ranking video that I did, so I'm not going to talk about them for too long. I would like to get to the MCU, but... 
for starters, let me just say, not a single one of these movies are going to be below probably good. Because I love the shit out of Spider-Man. I really do. I think you guys know that. So, Spider-Man 1 is going to go... Right there. For obvious reasons. That, you know, I, there's not much else to say other than it's just a really solid origin story for Spider-Man. Green Goblin's awesome. Willem Dafoe's awesome in that role. Yada, yada, yada. Y'all know the drill. Spider-Man 2. Right here. It's up with the goats. Of course, it has to be. It's, it's Spider-Man 2. Why wouldn't it be? Um, Doc Ock is fantastic. Everything with Peter Parker in this movie is just baller the ending is amazing that train scene is one of my favorite scenes in any movie ever not just superhero i'm talking any movie ever fucking love that train sequence not only the fight part of it but also the part where he has to stop the damn train from falling off the that the, 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 the rails amazing 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 stuff um only thing i didn't like about the movie and even even the first one i still don't think the Mary Jane love story is that good in these movies. That's it. Everything else is great, though. Literally everything else is solid. It's the, the Sam Raimi soundtrack, everything. Not the Sam Raimi soundtrack, the Danny Elfman soundtrack. Sam Raimi's directing, though, is fantastic. We all know that. I mean, the way he can do shots. That one shot where he's first swinging in to the uh, to the city and he sees Doc Ock on, like, the, the, the clock tower. and You, you kind of go into his glasses. and It's just... Or no, you go out of his glasses. That's what it does. It's such a cool shot. Love it. I'd like a Poison Ivy movie. That'd be cool. I don't know if it'd work in like the same gritty way as Joker. It'd have to be a little bit more of a goofy movie just because, I mean, Poison Ivy's a kind of a ridiculous character, but I think it would work. I would love to see that. I prefer one over two. I don't hate it, but even as a kid, I enjoyed the first one way more. That's fair. I used to feel that way, but I think my opinions change over time a little bit. <clears throat> um, but Spider-Man three, this is where the unpopular opinions are gonna come because uh, I think it's I think it's right. I, I said this in my video a lot. Oh my god, not not these bots. No, get out of here. Get out of here. Hide user. There we go. There we go. What was I saying? I talked about these a lot the other day, but the Spider-Man movies, a lot of them are like a, a razor thin difference apart. And this is the, this is the same. This is the same deal here. Like they're they're gonna be really close. Um Spider-Man 2 is much higher, obviously, but like these, especially, like this is like pretty close. And and on my ranking, this was much higher than one. So you'll see, I'm putting a lot of these really close. The Amazing Spider-Man... Okay, we'll talk about these uh, Spider-Man 3 first. Spider-Man 3, very underrated. Uh, only issues I have with it, Venom's a little iffy. And the story they do with him, they definitely rush some stuff because there's just a lot of stuff in the movie, but I love a lot of it. I especially love the whole emo Peter thing. I really do. Where's Captain Marvel? We haven't even done the MCU yet, so we'll get to Captain Marvel eventually. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, I think it's a very underrated movie. And it's it's definitely underrated or unpopular to say it's higher than the first one, but that's just, just how I feel. It's just how I feel. Uh Sandman's a great villain. I love how the movie focuses on the theme of forgiveness the whole movie. It's like very much focused on, especially with Sandman and even just forgiving himself for Uncle Ben. And a lot of forgiveness between Harry and MJ and all that and a lot of stuff with that. I love the black suit. I love the soundtrack. I love the action in this one. There's a lot of action in this one. So, I don't know. I'm sorry. I love this one. It's not in a BMS along with Spider-Man 2, but it's still high up there for sure. I mean, Toby was a simp in Spider-Man 2, but that's kind of the point. 
Peter Parker is a simpy kind of a guy. So, so I kind of am like, that's understandable. I think he should be that way, to be honest. That That's a Peter Parker thing to me. Best hero villain based on power? Um, Superman, maybe? I don't know. Maybe Wanda? At least from the movies, I'm not sure about comics though. Alright, well let's get let's get on with the Amazing Spider-Man. Probably another unpopular one, but I'm gonna put this top of A. Almost S. It's it's almost no actually fuck it. It's S. Is it higher than Aquaman though? Yes, it is. Hold on, I gotta just text someone. I gotta tell someone to, to keep the dog away from that door because he's harassing the cat still. You'll never see a bigger simp than Toby in Spider Man 2. <laughs> I hated the Emo Parker dance. I honestly didn't because it was like meant to be the scene of showing his ridiculous attitudes towards i'm gonna look, actually make myself a little bit smaller so you guys can see i just realized you guys can't see most of these movies you know what i can do i can make this there we go i don't want to make myself so small there we go Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I said to text someone again. Okay. MJ was engaging, kissing dudes on the side. How would you rank Spider Man actors? Um, they're all equal. I honestly can't choose. If we're talking just actors, like, in their portrayal, I don't think I can choose between them. Because they're all perfectly good in the role. But, if we're talking, like, writing-wise, I do think P Toby's Peter was probably the best Peter. And in terms of Spider-Man, I think Andrew Garfield and Toby's are equal to me. And after No Way Home, I think even Tom would be equal. To those as Spider Man. But as Peter, I think Toby's probably the best Peter. But in terms of acting, like I think they're all they all they all nailed what they're trying to do perfectly to, to be honest. So Okay, so yeah, Amazing Spider Man. Very underrated movie. I think the only issue is keeping it back is there's some weird choices with some of the editing in some of the movies, which is weird to me. Um I don't know why that happened, but some of the scenes were oddly edited. I don't hear anyone ever saying that, but I don't know. When I watched the movie, a couple of scenes look a little off, but Lizard's motivation also, I don't love, but they're not bad. They're not awful. They don't ruin the movie, but I love everything with Gwen. I love everything with him becoming Spider-Man. I love the scene on the bridge where he saves the kid and he shows the kid to his father and he sees the father, you know, hugging his kid and he's like, oh shit, this is why I should be Spider-Man because I can, you know, allow people to reunite with their families if i save them save their lives so shit it's a solid ass movie solid ass movie we left because i got scared electro was going to take one on the bridge the parent storyline i don't love but i also don't think it's that big of a deal because i don't think it takes up that much of the movie at least in the first one a lot of the parent stuff in the first one kind of connects to to the lizard story. So to me, I think that works more. It says someone donated nine pounds. Oh, there we go. Topco the legend. Thank you for the uh, dollar pound. What would you call it? Pound donation. I appreciate it. I 
felt Toby's Spider-Man wasn't the best. He was too serious. Yeah, I think Andrew was a bit more jokey, but he had some moments where he was a little fun with with it. I think. If it's actors alone, not just Spider-Man, Andrew's easily the best. Yeah, in terms of acting abilities, sure. I'm just thinking in terms of like their portrayal of it and like how they handle the specific character they're given. I don't know. I like watching all of them. I don't think there's anything bad about any of them. Like to be honest, as a whole, I had some issues with Tom Holland's um, like the writing for his character, for especially in Far From Home. But I mean, No Way Home fixed all my issues, so it's he's all, he's all good now. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Two, yeah, it's going right here. I don't even give a shit. I if you saw my ranking. You know this already. I love this movie. I don't think it's S, but it's solid. It's again razor thin difference between these other these other couple movies. They're very close. It's really hard for me to pick and choose, but like they're close. They're close. Top Gun Legend, another five pound donation. Thank you so much. It's okay. <laughs> Pretty convenient. He got bit by a spider that only can be survived only by his father's bloodline. Yeah, that's something the second one played into the story. I didn't like that, but I didn't think it was. It didn't ruin the movie. It was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, okay, so The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I would say, uh, along with the first one even, but this one especially, the best visuals out of any Spider-Man movie ever. Even better than No Way Home. Even better than any of the other uh, MCU Spidey films. To me, this has the best visuals. It looks the best. I think the CGI is the best. I think the webbing, uh, you know, swinging is the best. I think all of that is the best. By far. It's a beautiful movie. It's got really solid action. Great soundtrack by Hans Zimmer, obviously. I think... The only issue I have with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, some of the villains' motivations are not very good. Electros, I don't mind. Green Goblins, there's a lot of plot holes with his motivation, but at the same time, he's a cool villain in terms of his look, so I like that. But I don't like... I like the, the action scene they do with him at the end as well. I like what they do with him and Gwen, and I love the Gwen's death scene. It's one of the most beautiful scenes. Not in a good way, like a beautiful and a horrifying, horrific way, but it's beautifully done. And... Makes for one of the best scenes in the Spider-Man franchise. And yeah, that's about it. I, I think this is a really solid movie. It has a the whole theme of time is presented in it. Where it's all about Spider-Man not having enough time to save everyone. And that's very clear in the end because he can't save Gwen. I like that. Toby needs another trilogy. See, I honestly don't think he will just because... Just because... Apparently, Toby's not very easy to work with. That's just what I heard. Apparently, he asks for a lot of money. He he's a great guy. I've heard. I just I've also heard he just he's not as passionate for Spider Man as someone like Andrew is, for example. Nothing against Toby, but it's very clear he's not as passionate. So I don't think he'd come back unless they were offering him buttloads of money. And I don't know, but. We'll talk about No Way Home later, so no, no, no. We'll, we'll talk about that, but we're going to do that after the MCU, so we're not going to do, we're going to do that like with the MCU, so when it comes to Spider-Man, um, we're just doing the main ones for now, outside the MCU. But yeah, no, Amazing Spider-Man movies, highly underrated to me, they're both AAS movies, so... Willem Dafoe and James Franco put the Amazing Spider-Man's Green Goblin to shame. I didn't hate him. But his his it was the story that was bad. It was but the look and the performance by Dane DeHaan I thought was fine. I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. I just I just thought the story was kind of iffy. Uh, the action with Electro is great. Yeah. Okay. This is the one where I have trouble rating. I do because I think this is a beautifully made movie. But I just, I can't feel connected to animated characters as much as I'm sure a lot of other people can. It's a very personal thing. I know. I haven't seen a lot of animated movies besides Pixar. So it's like, I don't know. 
I still love this though. I think it's definitely going to be in the grate somewhere. I'm going to, I might honestly throw it like right here. That's probably blasphemy to not put it in S. I know a lot of people would have it in S, but I just don't feel the same about it as other people do. Probably because it's animated, to be completely honest. But I do love the movie. I think it's a really well-made movie. I do think the story itself is solid. I don't think it's the most interesting story in the world. I don't think it's like more interesting than some of the S-tier stories, but it's solid. I just want to see Miles Morales in live action now, to be honest. But I do love it. I'm very excited for the sequel. I am. I think A is high. It's just not as high as some people might want it to be, to be honest. I think some people would probably have it a lot higher than that. Do you think we'll see MCU Norman Osborn? I actually do. I think what they'll do is they'll have him show up and then Peter's going to be so... No, he's going to meet Harry in college. And when he meets Harry in college, he's going to be like, oh, what's your name? He's going to be like, oh, Harry. And you're going to be like, oh, Harry what? Harry Osborn? He says Harry Osborn. And then when he says Harry Osborn, he's going to like... Tom's going to like... Or Tom's Peter is going to like freak out. He's going to be like, what the fuck? Osborne, like I know that name, and then he's gonna realize that his dad is Norman Osborne. Maybe it's before they build Oscorp or something, and he's gonna be now assuming and skeptical that his he's gonna turn into the Green Goblin, but he's not. You know, he's not Green Goblin yet, essentially. So maybe he never becomes Green Goblin in this universe. I don't know, but at least he'll be there, and it'll be some sort of a thing that Peter has to get over because he realizes. You know, Green Goblin killed my my dog. <laughs> you know, No Way Home spoilers. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should probably. We're talking about Spider Man here, so you probably should. You probably should back out. <laughs> I just saved myself. <laughs> Spider Man is S tier for me. I wish it was for me too, but it's not. I'm, I'm putting an A. I think the whole No Way Home rollout and Andrew Garfield's thousands of interviews has made me more of a fan of him than his actual incarnations of Spider-Man. Yeah. What about Hobgoblin? What about him? We don't have Hobgoblin. Everyone calls Harry Hobgoblin in Spider-Man 3, but he's technically not Hobgoblin. He's technically New Goblin. Hobgoblin is, is supposed to be Ned. Or some version of Ned, at least. I don't think they're going to redo his villains, though. Like, I don't think they'll do another Green Goblin. I don't think they'll do another Doc Ock. I don't think they'll do another Sandman. I do think they'll do other Spider-Man villains. Maybe one or two they'll redo. I don't know. We'll see. Depends how long they decide to go on for this for. And maybe they'll do it in way into the future, but at least not anytime soon. You know? All right. So what did we just do? We just did... Into the Spider Verse, we got Venom. Venom uh, is good. I I'm gonna say it's like top of good. And honestly, I'm just gonna throw Venom with the Recarnage right above it. I think these are literally right next to each other and deserve to be treated as such because they're very similar. I, I think this one's only a little bit better because it it's a little bit more fun and Carnage is pretty cool. But I still think these movies are highly, highly, highly brought down by the fact that they're PG-13. These need to be R. I wanted to see Venom ripping off heads fully. I didn't want to see it halfway off screen. And I think you could have made these way more brutal and way more enjoyable if it was that way. And I wouldn't mind if they were even a little bit more darker and serious with some some of it because I know it's, cra it's Venom. You have to be a little bit crazy with it. But you probably could have made it serious for some of the moments and I probably would have liked it a little bit more. To be honest, I think these movies had potential to be great or even... Even S if they just did that, but they didn't. So, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of positives about these movies. There's also a lot of, oh my god, with these bots. But there's also a lot of negatives. 
So I think it's kind of held back a little bit to uh, to being in just good. I think Tom Holland meets Harry and Gwen in college, most likely. If they're going to do a villain for the next one, I think it's going to be Scorpion, most likely. They'll probably bring back uh, the dude from Far Cry 3. I forget, I don't remember the actor, the actor's name, but the guy who plays Voss, who was in the after credit scene of Homecoming, who was supposed to be Scorpion, I think they're going to do Scorpion. Because they already have him built up, so why not? And you also bring back Shocker, too. You can bring back Vulture, maybe. I don't know. That's the direction I think they should go. Um, but yeah, Venom, these movies are fine. They're they're enjoyable. They're just fun, schlocky movies that I, I don't really find them to be that good in terms of story. They're just fun. They're fun messes. I think this the... I think the the story, especially with the villain's motivations, is probably what hurts the most. I didn't think Riot was that great. Especially Carlton Drake, the guy behind Riot. Like, not the Riot symbiote himself, but the actual dude. I don't know. It's some, you know, twirly mustache villain type stuff that I don't think worked that well. Craven would be a good villain. Now, the only reason I don't think they'll do Craven for the MCU is because they're already doing a Craven movie in the Sony universe, so I think they're going to save that for something else. All right. Well, we're done with Spider-Man now, right? So we're on to the MCU. Finally, we can finish this shit. <laughs> We've been streaming for almost four hours. Oh, my God. Why can't they bring back Vulture, Scorpion, or Shocker? They don't know. No, see, I think a lot of people misinterpreted the ending of No Way Home. And this is, again, if you haven't seen No Way Home, just probably should click off now because we're, we're getting into talking about it a lot. They all forgot who Peter was. So any memory of Peter was gone, but not Spider Man, though. So that actually makes more sense because now Vulture, the only reason Vulture wasn't going to come after um, Spider Man was because he knew Peter was. You know, he was like, oh, Peter saved my daughter and you know, he's a kid. So he, he, he gave, you know, he was like, oh, I'm not going to tell uh, Scorpion where, who, who Spider-Man is or whatever. And, but now he doesn't know. So he just knows some asshole dressed as a spider messed with my business. He doesn't know who Peter is. So I think they could definitely do that and they could definitely make him, you know, work him into the next movie somehow. I don't know if Scorpion could carry a movie, so maybe you'd have to include Shocker and Vulture in there too. I don't know. What do you think about it? Is Venom really better than Blade? <laughs> I had more fun with Venom maybe, but Blade was probably a better story. Ah, it's hard. They're very close. It's not a big difference. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's 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 do these damn MCU movies. Iron Man... Yeah, I'll put it right. No, I I don't think I like it better than Spider Man though. Yeah, I'll put it right below Spider Man One. That's good. Love how I have four Spider Man movies just lined up together. Iron Man's Iron Man's a solid movie. There's really there's not nothing really I don't like about it. It's just kind of like a starter up for the MCU, and it's a great introduction to the character of Tony Stark. Shows off his personality very well. The, the villain's good. He's enjoyable. You know, I, I don't think there's really a down period in this movie where anything's boring. It's all pretty solid. Oh, they could bring Kingpin to Spider-Man too. That's true. Then we get to the Incredible Hulk. This one's weird. I don't know how I feel about this one to this day, honestly. I'm still, like, iffy on it. It's not bad, but I just don't. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's still better than people give it credit for. But it's not that much higher, though. It's it's still going to be, like, average somewhere. I like it more than Suicide Squad. Yeah, I'll put it right there. It's average. 
People think Spider-Man shows up in Hawkeye. I've been hearing that. I hope he does, but I doubt it. I really doubt it. Like we, we way too many fan speculations that don't happen. So I'm just I'm not expecting it at all. But I'd love it if it did happen. I'd be surprised. It just would feel kind of random, you know. It wouldn't have any story purpose. It would just be oh he's in the area so he shows up. It would make sense, but like for the story it doesn't make any sense. You know, so there's no point. There's no connection to the story that's going on right now at all. So from a writing standpoint, it would make zero sense. It would only make sense from a oh let's have people go oh holy shit it's Spider Man, which would take everyone's eye off the main story. So I don't think it's happening. Yeah, it's, I don't know, Hulk isn't the most interesting character to me. Like, I find him to be more interesting in Where Is No Way Home. No offense, no offense, no offense, but we're getting to it, man. We're getting to it. I say no offense, and then I, I follow that up with a line that is in no way offensive in any way, shape, or form. Uh, what do you think Daredevil comes into play in the MCU? I think they'll do a uh, rebooted show for him. That's my guess. Put No Way Home S? Alright. Iron Man 2. Um... Hulk's a bit too high, actually. I'll put it right there. Iron Man 2. Uh, it's going to be like right here. I don't think it's... No, it's too high. Yeah, it's it's going to be back here. Above Ghost Rider. That's fair. Iron Man 2 was a weak follow-up, but I, I still don't think it's a bad movie like a lot of people say it is because, like, it still has your 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 Tony Stark. You know, you obviously have your introduction to Natasha Romanoff, and I have fun with it. Got a lot more Rhodey in it, too, and it's a different, different actor for Rhodey in this one. And I thought, I think uh, Don Cheadle a little bit better. Than the one we got in the first one, in my opinion. I mean, also, we've seen it more, so it makes sense why we think he's better. But, you know, he, he's cool in this. Whiplash is a really shitty villain, but I actually like Justin Hammer. I think he's a good villain. Not, I don't like him as a person, but I like him as a villain, so that's cool. And, yeah, it's a fun movie. It's just got a pretty whack villain with some pretty weird moments. That's that's all I got to say about it. It's It's average. But Iron Man 3, oh, we're not on to Iron Man 3 yet. I forgot we got, we're going to MCU release order here. So Thor would be next. Thor is, is, is fine. I'm going to put in good. I, I don't really think this is as bad as some people make it out to be. Um, The stuff on Earth is way better than the stuff on Asgard. And I, it's not, not to say Asgard isn't cool, but I don't know. Some of the stuff in Asgard isn't as interesting as when he gets to Earth. Because when he gets to Earth, it becomes a fish out of water story. And you guys know I like those type of stories. So when he gets to Earth, I'm like all in on it. And there's a lot of fun scenes. I like his interactions with Jane Foster and the other characters there. You should put MCU shows in here. It's hard to rank shows with movies. So that's why I don't do that. Because like they're completely different in how they're structured. And they're a lot longer. So it, it's just hard. If I were to, I'd probably have like... WandaVision and, and Good, Loki and Great, Falcon the Winter Soldier and Average. Haven't seen What If yet, and Hawkeye so far has been great. So, you know, I'm getting so freaking hungry. Also, getting kind of hot. So, <laughs> I'm putting this on my head for some coolness. The show's been mostly pretty good so far. I'm gonna have some gum. You guys gonna have to hear me chewing for a little bit. I apologize. Gum makes it easier to talk. 
because it you know it keeps your mouth salivated you know Hawkeye might be by the time it's wrapped up I have to see that last episode first but currently uh, I would say Loki is TV movie well, I didn't include TV movies. I also haven't seen that movie, so I wouldn't include it anyways. Go put some ice for your water. Well, it's not. There's like nothing left anymore. It's like, it's like just a little bit. All right, where were we? Thor. Loki's awesome in this movie. All right. I mean, he's he's awesome in all the movies, but he's great in this one. It's a fine movie. I don't know. It's not. It's not that great, but it's it's fine. It's it's enough to be good at least. Now Captain America the First Avenger. I don't know why people shit on this movie. I've seen a lot of hate on this movie and I never understood it. I think for the most point most part people like it, but there's a lot of people who shit on it. I've never understood it. I would say it's right here. It's in great. Above Shazam. Sounds good to me. Have not seen or heard of Young Justice, no. So Captain America, I mean, Chris Evans, I think, is like the perfect Captain America. I mean, we've only had really two. <laughs> the other one from 1990, which was garbage, but he's a really solid Captain America. I think he really plays his part well. I, I just love how this movie plays out. I love the World War II theme. I mean, it's one of the only World War II superhero movies we have. Is it the only one? Wonder Woman's World War One, so... I'm sure there's been scenes in World War II and other superhero movies, but I can't think of one that's fully focused around World War II. I don't recall. Regardless, it's fantastic. I don't think it's S, but I really enjoy the first Avenger. I really enjoy a lot of the Captain America stuff in the MCU. He's definitely one of my favorite heroes in the MCU for sure. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe I'm still going too. I thought this was gonna last like three hours, but we're already three and a half hours through, and we got like a whole franchise left. <laughs> That's definitely underrated. Captain America One is highly underrated. Deserves more praise than it gets for sure. All right, and we got the Avengers. The Avengers is going to go in definitely S tier. Um, I just don't know where though. Would I put it higher than S the Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah, I'm gonna put it right there. I don't think it's higher than First Class or Days of Future Past, but no, I mean, maybe it should be. I don't know. This is such a spectacular. I'll put it right here. Such a spectacular movie, such a spectacular event almost. Because I mean, this this for its, for its time, this was like revolutionary. Because like at this time, we haven't really had many superhero crossovers to this to this degree. It's the biggest crossover event you'd see at this time. You know, you see all these solo movies come before, and out of nowhere, they're all coming together. It's like holy shit, what's happening? And the way they all interact with each other. Is incredible they have so much chemistry with each other all six of these actors for these characters including you know nick fury of course um samuel jackson who kills the shit out of that role and the battle of new york is probably some of the best scenes from the entire mcu i i, I love a lot of this movie it's a lot of fun too there's a lot of good humor in it that's pretty funny so wish we got a story about hawkeye and black widow and budapest that would have been cool it was like a solo, like a little movie or something. Avengers is solid. It's solid. Especially with Loki as the villain was, was fantastic. And the consequences of this movie still like play into the MCU to this day. Like this is a 2012. This came out nine years ago and we still have MCU properties today where Things that happen in this movie impact stuff that's coming out today still. So it's a very great movie for a lot of those reasons. Iron Man 3. 
so underrated. But it's only going to go in great. I'm not going to put it that much higher. Bottom of great. Bottom of great. Below Blade 2. I love how Iron Man 3 focuses so deeply on the aspect of like PTSD in, in Tony Stark because of what happened in, in, in Avengers. And they really focus on that hard in this movie. And that's probably the best thing about it, to be honest. The Mandarin stuff was a little iffy. Probably the only thing that holds the movie back for me. But everything else I thought was handled really damn well. I love the soundtrack. I love the scene in his house where he's getting attacked. Definitely some reckless behavior by Tony Stark. But he's always been reckless. So that's kind of expected to me. When he gets attacked and he throws a suit on Pepper. That was awesome. Pepper having a lot more of an, you know, presence in this movie too was great. I mean, she had a presence in the first two Iron Man. But this one, she's like really really there and i thought she was a lot of fun in this movie too the ending battle is pretty fun you know you include uh roadie a lot more in it no even happy has a lot more scenes in this one too so yeah i mean i watched all these but over the course of a few years it's not like i did these all in like a day or something so <laughs> well that'd be physically impossible but you know you know you know what i mean unfortunately yeah days of future past out of the top 10 there's a couple more that are definitely going to be up here, so keep that in mind. All right, Thor The Dark World. Probably the weakest MCU movie. But even then, I don't think it's that bad. I'm just going to put it top of meh. I don't think it's bad. Even the worst MCU movie is still just D. I don't think the worst, I don't think MCU has ever gotten that awful. To the point of F. But Thor The Dark World is just so boring and unmemorable to me. It's got the one of the weakest villains. I like watching Thor in it. He's fine. Jane's fine in it too. But that's about it. Everything else is just kind of boring. It's probably the... Oh, the Loki's good in it too. I forgot about Loki. But they, they don't do a lot of stuff with them though regardless. I mean they do that fake out death which I thought was always kind of stupid. Yeah, it's easily the weakest MCU movie for sure. At least out of the ones thus far. Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Honestly, I don't think I like this as much as everyone else does. But I still think it's going to go... Right here. Right below The Amazing Spider-Man. It's still S. But I know a lot of people who would probably put this like top 5, top 10. I think it's... It's just out of that top 10 range to me. I still love Captain America, the Winter Soldier. It's got a kind of a grittier story to it. It's definitely less, um, you know, MCU humor-esque like some of the other MCU movies. It definitely takes things more seriously. It's very political, a lot of politics thrown into it in a, in a good way. And I love the whole, the whole story with uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. being kind of, uh, what's the word? taken over by hydra and all of that story was probably some of the strongest storytelling in the mcu to be honest you know the elevator scene's fantastic yeah a lot of the action in this movie is fantastic i mean that knife fight the knife fight with uh cap against the winter soldier winter soldier as a villain was fucking awesome i mean obviously we I mean, always bucky but i mean the way he fights in these scenes is just so awesome it's so damn good and that ending, when he's like, he's telling him he's with him to the end of the line, and then he like doesn't end up killing him in the end. It's, it's such a good story. Such a beautiful story. Such a beautiful follow-up to the first one. You know, the, the inclusion of Black Widow and Nick Fury was great as well. They had great additions to the movie. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. It was a badass movie. Oh, she was, yeah, I would say this is one of her best performances is in this one, actually. Besides Endgame, I thought her best performance was definitely Endgame, but this one, she, she killed it. Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, we had a solid run of movies right here. Guardians of the Galaxy is easy S. Easy S. I'm going to put it literally right here. This might be high for some people, but I fucking love this movie, man. 
Guardians of the Galaxy is so much fun. So much fun, man. From start to finish, everything. It, 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 it's not just fun, too. Like, like, hear me out. Like, Deadpool and Suicide Squad, I said, were, like, really funny. Just fun movies. But, like, I didn't feel like their stories were that deep. Guardians of the Galaxy gets deep in a lot of scenes. It gets emotional. I mean, some of the scenes bring tears to your damn eye, especially the ending scene where they're all holding hands together at the end to, like, try to, you know, take in the power of the of the stone, the power stone. And even the, just the opening alone is, is like, fantastic. So it, gets, it already gets you hooked from the beginning. And it's such a different movie because it's, like, MCU so far hasn't been that crazy in terms of, like, where it goes. But this is, like, so much further out there in the universe and it's like some just really crazy shit on the other planets that we never even knew was happening and the chemistry between the cast of characters here i mean two of them are literally cgi but they have such good chemistry with people who are not cgi which is really damn interesting how that works you know rocket's great Groot is great uh peter quill so one of my favorite characters only because I like Chris Pratt a lot. I think he's one of my favorite actors. So, I mean, it just kind of happens. Gamora's probably one of my favorite of the women characters, to be honest. Drax is fun as hell, as always. And um, they work together really well. The chemistry here is is high. I think Ronan is not, not the best villain ever, but he's a good villain in this movie because I don't really need a good villain in this movie. I wanted to just see characters just kind of come together as a, as a family and that's what happens here and that all they need is a villain in their way i don't need a you know crazy interesting villain to to listen to because i don't really care i just want to focus on these characters so i don't care that ronin's not the best villain ever i just like how he's very serious so when they do include him it contrasts against these characters very well so it's a fucking great movie I've heard a lot of good things about the game. I haven't played it though, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah, great soundtrack as well. It's great. Not really any bad things to say about it. I actually, fun fact, I watched this movie for the first time on a plane ride to to Florida. That was my first time watching it, <laughs> which wasn't a really a good time watching it because it's like on a plane, a little tiny screen. But I watched it again, obviously, at home. And uh, yeah, all right. Avengers Age of Ultron, another underrated movie. I really don't think this is that bad. Um, but it's not that high either. It's uh, above Blade 2. Yeah, that's good. Age of Ultron, it's still a good, solid Avengers movie. It's just not as great because, A, a lot of it does drag. There's some middle parts that I do think drag a little bit. And I think Ultron, although still a decent villain... Could have been 20 times better. I love the introduction of Vision. Again, the chemistry of everyone's great. Love the introduction of Wanda. Love the introduction of Quicksilver, even though they kind of wasted Quicksilver, but he's still a good introduction. And I think it has some of the best, like, crazy action scenes out of a lot of the Avengers movies. I think it's better than the first Avengers. Definitely an unpopular opinion, but... I personally don't. I think it's still solid. I like the action against these robots. It feels very similar to the first Avengers in, in that final battle, but in a different way. I mean, that one shot where they do that little pan out shot of everyone just like kicking ass. One of my favorite scenes in the MCU. And um, Vision, again, has a great introduction to his character here. So I, I love it. I think it's a good movie. It's not... Uh, it's not... It's It's close... To being down and good, but I, I think what holds it up is, like I said, some of those action sequences. And the fact that the cast still has really good chemistry with each other and still are really interesting, entertaining to watch together. Maybe not as just not as good as the first one, but they're still there, you know. They wasted Quicksilver. <laughs> yeah, they literally did. Yeah, Ultron, in terms of, like, the, the voice and stuff, like, I thought his look, too, like, his look was awesome. It's just, I think the character wasn't, like, well-developed enough. Maybe they didn't have enough time for it. I don't know. Definitely underrated, though. It does not deserve the hate I see it getting sometimes. You could tell, you could tell I like the MCU. There's a lot of stuff from the MCU I really do like. Ant-Man, 
Another one that I don't understand some of the hate for it. I, no, I don't think people hate this movie. I think people just don't give a shit about it. <laughs> I, I think that's what it is. It's just no one really cares. But I'm going to be honest. Ant-Man's like pretty high on my list. I'm going to put it right here. This is like... I mean, I also am pretty nostalgic for this because it, it got me into superhero movies beyond Spider-Man. I mean, at this time, I only really cared about Spider-Man. And I only wanted to see this because... It looked similar to Spider-Man, so I was like, okay, I'll try it. And then it got me to want to watch some other stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll watch some other superhero stuff. But I love what they're able to do with Ant-Man because he turns he turns small. You know, like just so many cool things you could do with that. I mean, how many times as a kid have you been sitting around and you just think about, yo, how crazy it would be if I was like this tiny and I could like walk around this room and like the room was really big. I've thought about that a lot as a kid. I think we all have. Especially when you're playing with like toys and stuff. And so to utilize that in this movie is just amazing how they utilize the environments with these little action scenes. I mean, especially in the ending with, with the little girl's toy room. Like that was that was awesome. Yellow Jacket's a pretty good villain. I think they, they develop him well. I think the humor in this movie is pretty good. It's a fun, low stakes movie. Doesn't have a huge impact on the MCU, but it's fun. The second one does. The second one definitely does. And the third one, I think, is definitely going to be a huge impact on the MCU. Uh, but this one, it's just a fun side movie that I don't think really um, needs to be as big as some of the other movies does. And then we followed up with Civil War, which is going to go right here. Civil War is phenomenal, man. Civil War is so fucking good. This this is the movie that like Ant Man got me like open to watching other superhero movies, but Civil War is the one that really got me into them. Beyond just Spider Man and, and Batman and stuff, because it, it showed so many different heroes in this movie. So I was like, oh, this is actually a lot cooler than I thought it was, and. I love the story in this one because that's something I've always thought of is like, you know, they destroy a lot of buildings in these movies, a lot of chaos that happens. There's got to be some accountability there. And this movie focuses on that. This movie talks about it. This movie like covers that issue. And it's like, okay, people are not happy with that shit. And I think that's a realistic response to this universe. And it makes sense that it was a Captain America movie. Some people say, oh, it's stupid because it's not really Captain America. It's like Avengers 2.5. But no, it is Captain America's movie. You could tell if you watch it, it is his movie. But it's important to have these other characters here because they all kind of intertwine with the story. You know what I mean? So you kind of need them. You need Tony Stark there. And he's in for a lot of it, yeah. But you need him there. And Spider-Man introduction as well here, which was great. And everything with the ending between Cap and, and, and Iron Man I'm, oh, was just so good. That ending was fucking great. And that's the thing, though. I couldn't pick a side. Like, I Watching the movie, I was like, I don't really think I could pick a side because they both have really good points and they both have really good reasons. It's like, yeah, one of them just wants to have some accountability for us because... You know, we need rules. If we don't, we're reckless. I mean, cause havoc. But the other one's like, well, I don't want to be under a dictatorship because, you know, I was around in Nazi Germany, uh, you know, when Nazi Germany was around. And also, you know, my friend needs help. He, he doesn't deserve to get, you know, killed or, or whatever for this because it's not, it's not him that's doing it. It's, you know, him being controlled by Hydra. And... He also just doesn't want restrictions on what they can do because he knows what Hydra, you know, did. He knows that he trusted the shield and then that, you know, was compromised. So he doesn't want to trust the government. He doesn't trust any governments at this point. So I like that. I liked how both sides had good points and good si both sides had good reasons. So you, I never felt like I was attached to one side. I was just so intertwined in what was happening. And it played out beautifully. That ending fight was amazing. I mean, I love the airport fight. I do. But the airport fight's just more for fun. It's just like a fun scene. Whereas that ending fight was more personal and serious and visceral. I like how it 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 disconnected those. You know, it had that fun scene while it also was serious in the end. And that's that's exactly how it should be to me. So uh, to me, it's a near perfect movie. Don't have many issues with Civil War. Um, 
Yeah, great action too, obviously. No shit. Uh, Doctor Strange. Now, Doctor Strange is one that I did not like when I first watched it. But I must have been having a bad day or something because I rewatched it recently and I actually really enjoyed it. So I just think I was having a bad day. But it's not that great. It's just going to go in good to me. Bottom of good. No, no. We'll put it above Thor. And above Punisher. Yeah, above the Punisher. I think it falls short with the ending. Okay? It's really solid up until the ending. I don't like the third act of this movie. The whole Dormammu thing I thought was just kind of... Eh. I don't like the villain either, but... Strange himself, Doctor Strange's character, and the the buildup of him in this movie to, to become, you know, the Sorcerer Supreme or whatever. Like, I I loved all that stuff. I loved the introduction to all these mere dimensions and multiversal concepts and stuff. And the ideas that this movie presents, it's so huge for the MCU. It's just, it's just phenomenal. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch in this role is just, to me, just fantastic. I didn't think I'd like him this much. But I do. I, again, I didn't like this movie that much the first time I saw it. But second time, I would have put it like D probably if I didn't rewatch it. So I'm glad I rewatched it. Oh yeah, Doctor Strange 2 has high potential of being S tier for sure. High potential. <laughs> Alright. We don't got that many left. Some of these I got some unpopular opinions for, though, so that'll be interesting. Guardians 2. Guardians 2. Right here. I think this movie is pretty great. Not as good as the first one, but pretty damn great. I love Hugh... Uh, Ego, I was about to call him Hugo. Ego, the villain in this one. I actually think he's one of the best villains in the MCU. He has such an interesting character to me, and I don't get some of the hate that I hear him getting sometimes. You know? I got, yeah, the Dorm Dormammu scene was unique, but I still didn't like it, though. <laughs> it was unique. I just, I didn't really love it. But I, f I fucking love... Love... Uh, ego in this movie. Not, I don't like him as a person. I like him as a villain, and especially that twist at the end there, where he reveals that he put the tumor in in um Peter's mom's brain or whatever. And I'm like, holy shit! And the way it all plays out from there is just awesome. And I love the, the the themes in this movie too. Exactly, it hits you on a personal level because this is all. This movie's all about family, really. It really, that's really all it is a family of people who weren't originally a family so i guess friends friends that are close enough to be a family that's all the movie's damn really about i think the only issue a lot of people have and even i guess i have an issue with this is that they're kind of separated for most of the movie so we don't get to see them together for the whole movie until the very end which is fair but i'm okay with that because it gave them more time to shine individual characters and yondu yondu was one of the best parts of the movie to be honest yeah, his death was fantastic. It was one of the best parts of the movie, him, his character. I mean, he was not really in the first one that much, but he was great in this one. To me, this is like his film almost. <laughs> you know, it's he's part of the Guardians. So like it was, you know, for a short, short little bit, but he, he was just great. Michael Rooker did a great job. Um, He's a great actor, so I, I knew he would, but I loved it. can't really think of many negatives to be honest i know some people say the humor is a bit off in this one but i thought it was still pretty funny maybe not as funny as the first one but it was still funny spider-man homecoming spider-man homecoming um literally right below spider-man i'm not even lying like like i said in my video razor thin difference between these these couple of films right here i they're not that far apart to me I still, I still think Spider-Man Homecoming is pretty great, though. 
I don't love the Stark suit that he got, but that's about it. I think it's a good introduction. It's to to the MCU Spider Man. I think it's got a lot of solid um ideas going for it. You know, Mantis, look out! Oh, that was hilarious. That's probably the fun. Honestly, it might be the funniest joke in the movie. Yeah, no, I I always see Merle Dixon when I look at him. I agree. But I'd say the best part of Homecoming is Vulture as a villain. He's probably within my top three favorite Spider-Man villains. Without No Way Home, I would say he's like probably one of the best MCU villains. Besides like Thanos and Loki, maybe. Especially the twist. Having him be Liz's dad to me was like the best thing they could have done because that got me like... Like, everyone in the theater, I loved that. That was one of the coolest theater experiences because, like, everyone had the same reaction. We were all sitting there, and he's like, shows up to the door, and, and, and he, he opens the door. Everyone's like, oh! like that was fucking awesome. I, I remember that so clearly, but that was great. That was a great little twist. And it plays nicely because then it makes you more invested in this, you know, situation here towards the end. Because it's got Peter in a pretty damn big dilemma now. He knows, you know, Vulture knows exactly who he is. And that's that's an issue, obviously. And I love how it plays out, man. It's, it's a solid movie. Yeah, it's just not as good as the rest of the Spider-Man movies and the rest of the stuff up here. Maybe Mainly because some of the humor is, still has that MCU humor to it where it's not really funny. It's kind of like a Disney Channel humor, but it's fine. Now, I'm going to... I might piss some people off here. Thor Ragnarok... I enjoy, but not a ton. I'm going to put it below Iron Man 3. It's still a great movie, but I see people like uh, practically masturbating over this movie sometimes. I don't feel the same way about it. I'm sorry. I think my issue is that out of any MCU movie, this is probably the one that, ta the one that takes itself the least seriously and i don't know if i like that like i i wanted some serious moments i feel like this movie is literally a hundred percent just an acid trip of joking and 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 humor and i'm just like can we have something serious for this damn movie it's a hilarious movie and i do love a lot of the fun stuff about it it's a fun movie which is why it's in great but like they got to chill it with some of that shit you know what i mean <laughs> I wanted something deeper. I just don't think it gave me that. Okay, you had one. Okay, no, you had one. You had one deep scene. The scene went with his um with his dad, with Loki and him talking to his dad. That was a good scene. Um, that's about it though. Well, other good scenes in the movie, but I mean, in terms of serious good scenes, it's like the only one to me. So I don't like this movie as much as other people do, but I still think it's fine. How <laughs> dare you not masturbate for Ragnarok? <laughs> Wish we got a real Planet Hulk movie. Jesus, my dog just like screamed. Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin clears. Hell yeah. All right. I I might need to rewatch Thor Ragnarok because I actually haven't rewatched it in like at least a year or two. But I I still remember not liking it that much. Black Panther. Um, I'm gonna put this in good. Right below Kick-Ass 2. That's probably a solid spot. I think this is a good movie. I think it's a good movie. Ragnarok is my top 10 MCU. Probably my top 15, maybe. I don't know. Is that 15? I don't know. We'll see towards the end, I guess. But Black Panther. Let's talk about Black Panther. I think this one, the, the biggest positive about it is that it's very different. Because obviously it's in a whole damn new country that we've never seen in the MCU to my knowledge and it's a very different place because it's you know wakanda which we've i i didn't even know of before on you know until civil war it kind of introduced ideas of it and it's a really cool place there's a lot of cool stuff that they do in there and there's a lot of cool ideas that are explored in there and i enjoy t'challa as a character i enjoyed him probably more in civil war though 
like i think civil war did a good job of introducing him so like i got interested in it so I'm like okay i'm excited i'm excited for black panther now i think killmonger is a solid villain um but that's really it though i think the biggest thing i dislike about this movie oh my god my dog i swear I, hold on i need to like get him in a different room oh god Oh, he ran off. Never mind. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, the CGI. Now, I'm not one to bitch about CGI that often, but, like, when it's in the main action scenes, like, especially that one scene, it's, like, it gets a little rough with it. Some of, some of the CGI gets a little rough. And, to be fair, I haven't seen the movie since 2020. It was only last year. Why do I feel like 2020 was so much longer ago than it actually was, even though it doesn't feel like it was? Top 5 best MCU movie to me. Yeah, a lot of people like Black Panther a lot. And, um... I definitely don't dislike it. How is it highest rated in MCU and Rotten Tomatoes? Rotten Tomatoes don't really rate movies fairly. At least in terms of critics. Critics rate for a lot of other reasons. And a big part of that is also the rating system for Rotten Tomatoes isn't really a good rating system because they they rate them based off of the percentage of people who gave it at least a decent rating. So literally every critic could give a movie a 6 out of 10 and it'll get 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, which to me is so stupid. It should be the average. Does that make more sense? If everyone gives it a 6 out of 10, the movie should get a 60%. But that's not how Rotten Tomatoes works. They're like, oh no, everyone said it was at least a 6 out of 10. So we'll give it 100%. I'm like, what? I don't get that. So in actuality, Black Panther could have much lower than other movies in terms of their critic scores. It's just the Rotten Tomatoes, the way they do it, it ends up being number one. So, Oh yeah, Chadwick was great. He's definitely the highlight of the movie. I mean, no shit, it was his movie, so that makes sense. I'm black, so I automatically love it. That's fair. They just opened a new chicken spot right down the road. We should... We should it out. We should it out. I think your grammar is a little off there, not gonna lie. Alright. Black Panther, good movie. But I'm just not that high on my MCU ranking for sure. Oh, then we get Infinity War. Oh my goodness, y'all know where this is going. This is going, um... Oh shit, oh, that's a hard one. Is it better than Spider-Man 2? I don't know! That's so hard. Oh, that's so hard. I'm gonna put it right there. I, I wanna say it's better than Spider-Man 2, but... I don't know. Spider-Man 2 is another breed, you know what I mean? It's another breed. Best MCU movie? We'll see. For me, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Infinity War, I mean... <laughs> it's just so good, you know? It's got... Some of the best pacing in the MCU because it's so much happening, but it, it happens in a very fast way that isn't too fast. I feel like they do give enough time to breathe for these scenes. Thanos is best villain in the MCU, and the story leading up to it is phenomenal. The ending is phenomenal. The entire battle in Wakanda is phenomenal. All the little character moments between all the different characters like Vision, Wanda, they have a good scene there at the end. You have a lot of good stuff with Thor, with with you know some of the Guardians, introducing the Guardians in there was great. Spider-Man gets a couple of scenes to shine. I think we can all agree that that you know ending scene when everyone gets snapped away or 50% of people get snapped away is just really well done. There's just no music, everyone just is freaking out, and it's like, what the shit? One of the coolest endings to a movie ever, in my opinion, or a comic book movie ever. So, yeah, it's it's solid. 
It's solid stuff. Simple as that. I don't really have any negatives, to be honest. I physically can't think of a single negative for it. Yeah, I can't. Maybe tone down the humor in a couple scenes, but that's about it. What's this tier list called? I think I just called it. I made it myself. It's just called comic book movies, I think. I don't know. I'll, I'll share it when I'm done. Ant-Man and the Wasp. I didn't like it that much. Honestly. I like it more than Iron Man 2, though. But I didn't like it that much. I don't know what it was. I didn't care for the villain. I didn't care for Ant-Man. I feel like it was more of a Wasp movie than anything, which is fine, because Wasp is cool. But, like, there was barely any cool stuff for Ant-Man. He was kind of reduced to comic relief, which he is funny, but why is he reduced to comic relief? He should be... Enhanced by comic relief, not reduced. Oh yeah, no. Thor, that scene when he shows up in Wakanda is one of the coolest scenes in that movie. Oh, Iron Man versus um, Thanos in, in the, the Doctor Strange versus Thanos scenes were also fantastic. A lot of good one-on-one -on -one fights. Just all sorts of good shit in that movie. It's a very sad movie too. Gamora's death is great. A lot of good stuff. I, I can go on and on about Infinity War all day. Iron Man 2, yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't know. It's not my favorite. It's average. I don't think it's bad, though. I don't think it's bad. It's just... Very average. Very average movie. Kind of lame. Yeah, I guess after Infinity War, it's kind of hard to follow that up. Oh, shit. I just... I shouldn't be touching my face. I had a cut right here, and I think I just opened up the cut. No, did I? No, it's all good. I don't know. I feel like I scratched it and opened it up. We're good, though. Yeah, it was it was rough trying to you know follow that up, but I just even then I just didn't really enjoy it. Captain Marvel, literally right behind these two. Actually, no, yeah, right there. No, it's even behind. Yeah, right there. In front of that. In front of New Mutants. Captain Marvel. It's not horrible. It's not even meh. But like. I don't. I just had a trouble caring about this character. Am I the only one who doesn't really like Captain Marvel? Like, I don't know what it is. I didn't like her in Endgame either. It, it's just look. No, okay, I do know what it is. I do know what it is. I think the issue here. It's not Brie Larson. Brie Larson is a great actress. I see people shitting on Brie Larson, and that doesn't make sense to me because she's great. I've seen her in many movies, and she is great. But the problem with Captain Marvel is that she's this character. We don't all agree. I mean, I'm not saying it's dog shit. It's average. Whatever. The problem with Captain Marvel is that she has no emotion, right? Which is the point of the character because she's like, you know, memories all over the place and stuff, and she's very hard, you know, a hard ass but I don't find characters like that to be fun to watch. I mean, even the Punisher was kind of like that. And that's one of the reasons I didn't like the Punisher 1988 or 1989 movie because he was so emotionless. But at least 2004 one, he, he started to gain some personality throughout the movie. But I don't feel like Captain Marvel really ever had personality in this movie. I don't know. And I don't think she did an Endgame either. I hope she's better in her sequel. I just didn't care for her. And when you don't care for the main character, it's hard to care for the movie. I thought the scrolls were cool. Nick Fury was fine, but at the same time, they had a really stupid reason for why his eye got, you know, scratched. Why he has the eye patch? I thought that was weird. The cat was cute and all, but like that was just a weird reason for his eye to get messed up. The action wasn't that, all that exciting. I don't know. I didn't find it to be that fun of a movie. It it, it made me made it so I'm not that excited for the sequel. And I hate when people say, I I just hate when people say, and I hear this way too much. It, it is fair. There's a lot of people who will call this movie bad simply because a woman's leading it. That is true. But I do hate when people are like, oh, you don't like it because you're sexist. Or, oh, you only don't like it because it's a woman. That's No, that's not why. If that was why, then why would I have Wonder Woman in my top, like, 15? You know what I mean? Like, I would love to see some really solid 
movies with women leads. I would love to, but I just don't think Captain Marvel was that. Simple as that. Simple as that. There's definitely people who dislike it just for that reason, which, you know, fuck those people. But for me, I just didn't like it. I hope the sequel's better. I do. But I'm not I'm not holding out much hope, to be honest. <laughs> just to be honest. I don't know who... Is it the same director or is it someone else doing the sequel? I mean, I have a fun time watching, like, all these movies, except for the ones in Bad. Pretty much anything above Bad, I at least have, like, somewhat of a fun time watching. So, there's that. Oh my girl, I thought it was boring. Yeah, um, that's fair. And it's not like, I can relate to, oh no, not this. I can relate to uh, women characters just as much as a male character. Like, unless the relating part is specifically tied to their gender, then obviously no, I can't. <laughs> like, if if she's having an issue with a period, uh, I, I can't relate to that, but... <laughs> But obviously, most things you can relate to, but like they didn't make her relatable at all to like anyone. You know what I mean? That's that's the issue I have. You know, I think if you're gonna be comparing women-led movies, I mean, Wonder Woman's the one I think you should go for. To be honest, that's the one I'd be taking my daughter to go see. I, that's the one I'd wanted to look up to. I'd want to look up to Wonder Woman, not no Captain Marvel. Uh uh Even Black Widow was much, but we'll we'll get to Black Widow. Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame. Now, everyone has an opinion here, and I, I love this discussion because they're very close to me. Whether Endgame is better than Infinity War or vice versa. I think Endgame is better than Infinity War. I'm putting it right here. In my number three spot for comic book superhero movies. And here's my reason why. If you're only watching these movies for action, sure, Infinity War is better. Sure. If you like faster movies, sure, Infinity War is better. I like character-driven stories. Avengers Endgame is the most character-driven MCU movie there is. The first hour of the movie, I'm not even talking about the last hour. Everyone always says, oh, it's only the last hour that's good. Everything else sucks. That's bullshit. The first hour is honestly my favorite thing from the entire MCU. Them grieving over all that loss and then the time jump and then them grieving even more over five years of just pain and suffering is some of the best stuff from the MCU. Those performances from all those characters and the dialogue and the different scenes they have. I mean, you have the scene with every everything with Tony talking to, you know, Pepper and then people trying to solve the issue as well. And, and they start to come up with ideas and they're all talking about what they lost. It's really powerful stuff. I also love the scenes with um steve and natasha in the one room like so many great fucking scenes between these characters in that first hour i love it you introduce tony stark's daughter too it's like holy shit that middle part of the movie is like the fun part of the movie right so you get to the second half a second act and it's just fun it's just you know time travel fun you get to revisit some old places you get some nostalgia that's fun whatever it's not really meant to be taken seriously but then once you get to the scene where tony's talking to his dad everything's come serious again and you have this really nice conversation between tony and his dad i love that scene as well and then you get into the ending which is just action-packed fun you have them getting their asses kicked at first it's a couple badass scenes you know uh steve lifting the hammer and stuff like all that stuff's great but you know everything's looking really shitty they're all down they're all fucked and then the portals come out everyone comes back and then there's this massive battle i mean how can you not love this movie like this is the this is one of the greatest things you could watch for a comic book movie definitely it's not it's, i don't like it more than joker or logan but like it's it's up there it's my favorite mcu movie for sure so that does confirm no spider-man no way home i do not like more than avengers endgame um, but I, it's just fucking, it's great. It's great. Female Captain America movie made me cry. What, what female cat? I'm not Captain Marvel. 
It was definitely the greatest theater experience, I agree. I mean, Spider-Man No Way Home was a great theater experience too, but I think Endgame was a little bit better, to be honest. More, it was more of the best payoff. I mean, this is like 10 years worth of movies just to like... It's just... I love it. I love this movie. I can watch this movie a million times and never get bored of it. And then Tony's death in the end and then what happens with Steve. Everything in the aftermath too is really great. You know, Steve just going to spend time with Peggy back in the 40s. I mean, that's just so beautiful. Everything about that is just beautiful. And the way it ends with them just dancing with that song playing and it's just like... This is just amazing. It's such a happy ending and it's such a good note to such a depressing movie. <laughs> you know, I just fucking love this movie. I'm sorry. Infinity War is great too. But this one's just on another level. What's your opinion on The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings? I love the Lord of the Rings movies, but I have not seen The Hobbit, so I can't can't say much about that. All right, Spider-Man Far From Home. Um yeah. I wasn't a big fan. Okay, I like it. I just don't love it. I'll put it right there. If you guys saw my ranking, you guys probably know this. Far From Home was pretty low. I don't know. It was the most MCU humor-esque type movie. There was way too much humor, and I felt like they needed to chill with that, especially for Spider-Man. Like, everyone was a comedic genius. Aunt May was reduced to Happy's fuck buddy in this movie, and I wasn't a big fan of the Mysterio character, although he was awesome in terms of his visual effects and what he was able to do, and Jake Gyllenhaal was great, but the motivation I didn't care for, I didn't care for the whole glasses thing, I didn't care for a lot of the different suits he was using in this movie, I don't know, I didn't love Far From Home, I just didn't love it. Spider-Man came out, yeah, but that's, the thing is, that's payoff that we never anticipated it was kind of just like out of nowhere like oh by the way those characters from those really old movies you're gonna see back it's a lot different than a payoff where it's like a continuous story that's going on for like 11 years straight you know what i mean so far from home i, I, I don't know people like this a lot more than i do I th it's a good movie still don't get me wrong but i wouldn't call it you know a great spider-man film all right, keep in mind, I have not seen Eternals. I had it here because I was planning on seeing it, but I uh, I haven't yet, so I can't really include it, unfortunately. So we'll just throw that back there. Black Widow. I don't see Superman 3. It's right, uh, it's right here. You didn't see it because it's in meh. <laughs> That's why you didn't see it. I was pretty much higher than it. Black Widow, I think is good. I'm going to put it like, I think it's right next to Far From Home. I like it a little more than Far From Home, I think. Oh shit, Black Widow came out this year. Yeah, I didn't even realize it came out this year. I had fun with it. I think it was a pointless movie to a degree because it's like, we could have seen this like years ago and it would have made more sense, but I also still had a lot of fun with it and thought it was a pretty good movie. Don't know. Yelena was the best part of it, though. Like, as much as I love Natasha, Yelena was the best part of it. Like, I want a Yelena solo movie just because Florence Pugh is just so fun. I love her in Hawkeye already. So, that is one of the main reasons why I'm enjoying Hawkeye a lot. Is mainly the her in the past episode was probably one of the reasons that recent episode was my favorite so far. Um, it's definitely not the most exciting MCU movie for sure, but I, I enjoyed it. I thought Taskmaster, uh, Taskmaster was disappointing, that's for sure. But I don't think it was an awful idea. I just think it was disappointing. But the rest of the movie was fine. It's only good because of stuff like that, to be honest. Yeah, Elena stole the show for sure. Yeah, I'm going to see Eternals when it comes out on Disney Plus next month, so we'll, we'll react to that probably, I'm thinking. Alright, we only got two left. Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, however you pronounce it. This one is going to go... Uh, it's going to go in great. Above Iron Man 3. You know, I'll even put it above Avengers, actually. Age of Ultron. Just by a little bit. 
this is a this is a solid, solid, solid movie. I don't know if it has the. It's definitely one of the most formulaic Marvel movies. Like it, this is when I started to feel, like this movie in particular made me start to realize that yes, a lot of the Marvel movies are very formulaic. But if it works, I don't really give a shit. So, whatever. Sadly, the best scene is the first ten minutes. Kind of goes downhill from there. For me, see, uh, oh yeah, from Black Widow. Yeah, I, 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 I would say the first ten minutes were really solid. Yeah, I agree. Shang Chi was a good movie, but the one thing that stuck out for me and made it a great was the father's journey and motive. I agree. He was actually a really solid villain. Like. That was solid shit. Um, the action is what makes it the best for me. Like, I, I don't think the story was necessarily the, the greatest thing ever, but it has probably the best action in the MCU in terms of the in terms of like the hand to hand combat martial arts. It was yeah the best action in the MCU for sure. Even though I I, I don't love the scenes as much as something like an End Game, but like. I mean, those hand to hand combat was like that bus scene. That bus scene is hot, man. That bus scene is hot. I do plan on watching the raid at some point, so I, I, I will at some point. But that, but yeah, that bus scene was one of my favorites for sure. All right, let's just get to it. Spider Man No Way Home again. Not doing Eternals. I haven't watched it yet. Um, if you guys have seen my ranking, you know I don't like it as much as Spider Man Two. So unfortunately, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be up here. But I like it more than The Amazing Spider-Man. So it's going to be somewhere in here. Somewhere in here. Where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? I'm going to say... Right. Uh, for now... Right there. I like Kick-Ass too much. I don't know if I could put it above Kick-Ass. Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm not going to talk about it that much because A, I have to go soon. So I should, I got to cut this stream off soon. And B, I've talked about it way too much this past weekend. So like I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm all spider man out. I don't want to talk about it anymore. If you want to see my full thoughts, I have full reviews on it. So definitely check, go check those out. But quick little thoughts the only things i didn't like about it is some of the stuff i felt like just could have been a lot better spoilers by the way spoilers if you haven't seen it get the hell out of here um <laughs> some of the stuff could have been a lot better it was awesome the way it was but i think some of it could have been a lot better obviously there's a lot of missed opportunities some for some characters here and there and some of the villain stuff it seemed like covid got in the way of what it could have been i feel like there could have been a lot of better things if the pandemic didn't happen or if they just took more time on the movie Everything else, though, I love the story. I love what it does for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Absolutely love, love, love what it did for his Peter Parker and his Spider-Man. Love that new suit he gets at the end. The villains were fun to watch in it. Toby and Andrew, fucking yes. I'm so happy they did that. Um, soundtrack was great. Michael Giacchino was pretty solid with that music stuff, so I kind of expected it. And um, it's just all around a fun movie. Doctor Strange was a good good part of the movie as well i actually cared about peter and mj's story in this one as well you know i think the peter and gwen stuff is much better in the amazing spider-man movies but this was still a solid stuff i actually cared about the relationship at the end there and i was actually kind of sad to see what happened happen goblin phenomenal green goblin i mean willem dafoe was amazing yeah andrew did steal the he, he was I love Toby and everything, but Andrew was better in this one in terms of just acting and his, you know, what he was able to do in the movie. They didn't give Toby as many scenes, to be honest, as I feel like they gave Andrew. I mean, they did have the Toby thing at the end where we almost thought he was going to die, which was crazy, but fucking loved it. First act was painfully average. I wouldn't say it was average. I would say it was just, it was definitely not as good as the second act. I'll agree. Though. I would say the second act is like miles better than the first act, but like the second half better than the first half. But I still thought the first half was fine, for the most part. Yeah, they teased Miles in there. That was cool. A lot of things building up for the future. Uh, a lot of things like the after credits with the Venom thing. And apparently, Andrew might be coming back for The Amazing Spider-Man 3. That's been a rumor recently. I believe it. I hope it happens because that would be awesome. 
Yeah, Aunt May's death scene was really emotional. I mean, really beautifully shot movie too. Some of the best directed Spider-Man stuff from recent movies. I think Spider-Man 2 or The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is it's definitely still better in the visual department. But I wish I could pull an all-nighter. But no, I'm, I'm about to die right now. My voice is like dead. I'm like on the verge. This is the longest stream I think I've done on this channel. I've done longer streams before though. I did a Zombies for Charity event. Where I played Call of Duty Zombies in this tournament thing for like 10 hours straight once. I think that's the longest stream I've done. That's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting them to do a Venom movie with Andrew. Also, they have Morbius there. They can mess with Morbius. Or the new um, Craven movie too that they're having in the works. They can do something with Craven against Andrew. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So that's my final thing here. Let's just let's zoom out so you guys can get a full look. I think this is pretty solid. It's a pretty solid. Oh, you guys can't even see it because. Oh, shit. Hold on. I got to zoom out a little bit. There we go. All right. I think this is a solid tier list. As you can see, S and A are definitely the ones most fill. I don't hate a lot of these movies because there's only, like, there's not that many in DNF. So I think that goes to show I love a lot of these movies. Not a lot of them are going to be in DNF, you know. But let's see. One is Joker. Two is Logan. Three, Endgame. Four. Dark Knight 5, Spider-Man 2, 6, Infinity War, 7, Kick-Ass, 8, Spider-Man No Way Home, 9, Civil War, 10, Zack Snyder's Justice League. So that's my top 10 right there. It's a pretty solid top 10. If any movie's going to get in there next year, I think Doctor Strange 2 has potential. Definitely Bat the Batman. I, I would be very shocked if the Batman is not in S tier. I really hope it is. I mean, everything looks amazing about it, so I don't see why it wouldn't be. But again, you have to watch the movie before, you know, the movie's going to make or break that decision. Obviously, I can't, you know, make that decision based off trailers. And The Flash definitely has potential, but I'm not too sure. I'm also really excited for Aquaman 2, of course. I'm excited for what else comes out? Black Adam. I don't know. Like the other Marvel movies, you have Thor 4 actually, I think might be decent. I don't know. We haven't heard much about it, but I hope it's good. And then there's Black Panther 2, which has been sounding like development hell. Everything I hear about it is rough with what's going on with it. And then the Marvels. Has that even come out next year? I don't even know. Guardians 3 comes out, I think, 2023, unfortunately. But I'm very excited for that. Moon Knight, Miss Marvel. Yeah, those are, those are the shows. I'm excited for those, but those are shows, not movies. Shazam 2, I don't think that comes out next year. I think that's 2023. Your reaction to the 1976 Incredible Hulk movie? Probably not, but you know, you never know. Never say never. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you all later. I gotta go.